You're in the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. With Gene and Chris, welcome back to the Paracast. In a couple of moments, we'll be introducing Rosemary Ellen Guiley, who has written a new book with Rick Fisher called Ouija Gone Wild. But I'll tell you first, before we hear about that, my few experiences with the Ouija board when I was a teenager. You really want to hear this, Chris? Yeah, if it's a cool story, sure. I don't know if it's a cool story, but let's see. I had a close friend named Kenneth Alpert. We grew up in Brooklyn, New York. And his mom got a Ouija board one day and started playing with it and getting all sorts of screwy, crazy answers. She always insisted that she didn't fake it, that she wasn't moving the planchette subconsciously or manually or something, but we were getting all sorts of freaky answers. Now, I've tried the Ouija board, and it doesn't like me. It didn't like my friend Kenny Alpert, who may be listening to the show and will contribute his wisdom maybe in our forums. But his mother, I don't know, kind of strange. Maybe psychology. I've never been able to make one work myself. It just sits there. It doesn't like you. <laughs> well, we're going to have to ask Rosemary when we get her on uh, what's up with that. I, I, I haven't really tried that many times, but the few times I did try as, as a kid, it uh, it just kind of sat there. I think maybe we got a yes or a no or something one time. but Well, maybe your subconscious was asleep at the time. Mm, possibly. We'll have to see. I, you know, there's definitely something to it. I mean, gosh, reading Rosemary's book, it's like, oh, my God. And that's probably just tip of the iceberg. We'll have to have to dive into some of these really <laughs> amazing mind-bending accounts. Uh, well, if I, you always... think if you think that a Ouija board is a parlor game, it may not be. Before we bring on Rosemary, who's champing at the bit right now, she's there. She's available. I want to tell you something. I was reading, and this is an historical thing, an historical fact. I was reading a publication called Flying Saucer Digest from a guy named Rick Hilberg, who was a longtime UFO researcher from the Cleveland area, and he has been involved in this field for so many years. He was a guest very recently when we had a special episode because of the passing of Lucius Farish. Well, he reminded me that on September 12th, 1952, and I was born September 9th, by the way, but not that year. September 12th, 1952 will be the 60th anniversary of the case of the Flatwoods Monster. Ooh, boy, break out the fireworks. And I kind of think here about all this, that's kind of a singular kind of episode. You well, look, I would say that's about as standalone as they get. Yes, you know, most UFO cases we have some kind of repetition. But in the case of the Flatwoods Monster, it happened then in the evening and was never repeated. Yeah, it must have been just a quick, uh, like, arrest stop or something on their way to um, Zeta Reticuli. Actually, they were going to the toy store to buy a Ouija board. Okay. If you say so, I, I'm not sure about that. That monster, I, I don't recall it having fingers, but maybe. Well, I just made that you up. Need fingers to operate the planchette, which is the, the device that uh, spells out the, the words uh, on the Ouija board. And we'll get into the actual functionality of it, obviously, in the show. Rosemary, give us a background. Why don't we, why don't we bring Rosemary on and uh, let her take it away? You know what? World. This is it because I don't claim to know a lot about Ouija boards. I used to own one, but I can't claim to know a lot about it. Actually, I've owned two in my life. I found an old wood one uh, okay. in, a, in a garage sale and um, actually put it on my wall in college. I had a Ouija board on my wall. So that was what caused it? Well, I just never could get it to work. And... and it, it, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's operator error or something. Um, I know people that uh, that were just very, in fact, uh, quite impressed with uh, the kind of results that they got. But, you know, I just was never able to do it for some reason. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's bring on Rosemary Ellen Guiley. Rosemary? Hi there, Jean. Chris? Hey, Rose. How are you doing? I'm doing quite well. Thank you. Yeah, you're, uh, you're just cranking these books out. I love this one. Uh Luigi Gone Wild, this is an <laughs> amazing story. It's just jam-packed with all kinds of really cool stuff. Uh, welcome to the show. 
Welcome back. Thank you. It's just great to be back. You know, this project was in in the works for several years. Rick and I uh, conceived the idea for it um, several years ago while we were sitting around a weekend, a holiday weekend with a group of paranormal friends in Gettysburg doing ghost research. And uh, that's where this idea was born. Uh, Both of us uh, felt that the Ouija board is one of the most fascinating spirit communications devices and probably the most misunderstood and the most uh, maligned. You care to uh, elaborate on that a little bit? Why don't we actually let's start with some background. Most people, I think, don't realize how old the actual um, idea of a talking board is. And why don't you give us a little background on this particular system or style of divination and then how that um, evolved into the Ouija board, which is the most popular, obviously, of of a number of them. The device that we call the Ouija board officially goes back to 1891 when the patent was issued for it. But similar devices have been in use uh, in different divination methods uh, around the globe really since ancient times, uh, using some sort of counting or number or letter pointer or device to get spirits to spell out messages and uh, people have used um, various writing instruments. Uh, Automatic writing is is a form of spirit communication, but people have also attached pencils to um, platforms and uh, similar to the the pointer that the Ouija board uses to uh, spell out messages. Those were quite popular during the 19th century when spiritualism got its start. I wanted to ask kind of a simple, stupid question here because I'm very good at that. Okay, why do we assume that spirits must communicate in this particular fashion? Why something that would be a pointing device to point to letters or numbers? I think because human beings have had a great deal of difficulty communicating with the spirit world. If it were, it were, it were that easy, all of us would uh, you know, do it all the time. Uh, we would have some sort of direct communication. But spirit communication has always been rather indirect. We've had to have mediums, either a device or a person, who seems to have the right antenna, so to speak, to, to get a signal from the beyond, a message from the beyond, and be able to put it into uh, a material form, uh, either uh, through direct voice or through writing, in order to deliver the message to to the living. And so human beings have come up with all sorts of divination methods and mediumistic methods to try to reach the dead and spirits. This is an urging that human beings have had since the dawn of history. All right, but how did it become essentially a toy that you buy in a toy store, Toys R Us, or you order at Amazon or something? Well, the Ouija board originally wasn't uh, so much a toy. It was marketed um, as a spirit communication device. And it uh, came on uh, at a time when mediumship was still very popular. The spiritualism uh, movement really got off the ground in the early to mid-19th century. The Ouija board came along right at the tail end of the 19th century. And what it did was it put mediumship in the hands of the average person. You didn't have to go to somebody else's seance. You could do your own seance. You could talk to the spirits right in your own living room. So it was both a spirit communication device and an entertainment device. But uh, it was largely a, a tax court ruling that got the Ouija board classified as a game or a toy. And uh, that was because a competitor of the Ouija board um, went to court with the IRS, against the IRS. um, So basically here the IRS is getting involved in a dispute (laughs) over something that is supposed to channel psychic powers. And this is very unusual. I mean, nowadays, of course, it's whether you imitated the iPhone or the iPad. But we're talking about a time when this kind of device, boy... Strange. I want to ask you more about that, Chris and I. The book is called Ouija Gone Wild, and it sounds like the lawsuit went wild with Rosemary Ellen Guiley and Rick Fisher writing the book. You're on with Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. You know, during the summer, it seems like just about everyone is on a different schedule. Yeah, vacations, shorter days, people are working remotely. 
So meeting all your clients and colleagues in person can be, well, impossible. And that's why I recommend go to meeting with HD Faces. It lets you meet face to face no matter where you are this summer. With GoToMeeting by Citrix, it takes just a webcam and a click to collaborate in a group HD video. You can even join from an iPad. It's so easy to use. iPad users just download the free GoToMeeting app to join. And take it from me, this is an excellent product. And my listeners can try GoToMeeting free for 30 days. Don't wait. For this special offer, visit GoToMeeting.com, click the Try It Free button, use the promo code PODCAST. Be sure to use the promo code PODCAST at GoToMeeting.com. Take it from me. Go to meeting with HD Faces Just Works. Healthy soils grow healthy plants. So before you plant your survival garden this year, is your soil healthy? Maximize your crisis garden soil with EM1 from Terraganics. EM1 organic soil conditioner, fertilizer amendment, and compost accelerant provides healthier gardens and faster, efficient garden composting. EM1 from Terraganics.com quickly improves soil structure by increasing nutrient availability and converting organic matter into soil humus. This improves seed germination and root growth, improves plant quality, size, color, flavor, nutrient value of fruits and vegetables and improves shelf life. And when rain is not in the forecast, no worries. EM1 improves moisture retention in soils, helping reduce drought stress. Just like you prepare all else, prepare your crisis garden for maximum yields with EM1 from Terraganics.com. Order now at T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com or call toll-free 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Terraganics, life's getting better. When I hear about natural disasters and the danger of having no water, I'm not worried. Why? Because I have an Aquapod. Got it from MyPatriotSupply.com. The Aquapod Emergency Water Storage Kit comes with a pump and a huge 65-gallon bladder that easily fits in a standard bathtub, allowing a family of four a 14-day supply of safe, fresh water and at a much lower cost than bottled water. Made in the USA with BPA-free material, the Aquapod keeps water fresh for up to eight weeks. Just fill from your tub, then pump into jugs or bottles. The Aquapod is only $29.95, and when you buy two or more Aquapods at MyPatriotSupply.com, com you'll qualify for free shipping plus check out the survival seed vault with 20 seed varieties tattler canning lids the nation's only customizable long-term storable foods and much more at mypatriotsupply.com get stress-free shipping on all orders over 49 dollars call 866-229-0927 or visit mypatriotsupply.com for emergency preparedness self-reliance and food independence let me ask you a question what does freedom mean to you the freedom to choose, the freedom to vote, the freedom to worship. How about the freedom to take control of your own future? My friends at Eat Foods Direct are celebrating freedom this month while helping you take control of your greatest dependency, food. Right now, you receive one of their new Patriot Packs free with every $289 you spend on their highly nutritious and great-tasting food. The Patriot Pack is a 30-day supply of eFoods quick-fix, easy-to-store food. For example, purchase a one-year supply and get five Patriot Packs, which is five months of food free. Use the extra food for everyday use and save hundreds off your grocery bill. Give your free Patriot Pack as a gift to a friend or relative, or simply add more food to your long-term supply for free. Call 800-409-5633 or go to eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Alex and get your free Patriot Pack with purchase. Operators are standing by. Call 800-409-5633 or eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Alex. eFoods is so affordable, the more you store and eat, the more you save. Go to eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Alex or call 800-409-5633 right now. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. We have Rosemary Ellen Guiley returning to the Paracast to talk about the new book she wrote with Rick Fisher called Ouija Gone Wild, subtitled Shocking True Stories. Shocking True Stories. Now, I'm shocked, and I guess we want more information about this. I'm shocked, Rosemary, about the lawsuit. Let's go on to more details. Well, uh, the Ouija board was gaining more popularity. The, the first board came out in 1892. The patent was issued in 1891. And the uh, toy company, uh, and it was a novelty company uh, that actually started with this, uh, was, uh, you know, trying to get it into the, the mass market. And there were imitators, competitors who saw that it was a good thing, a lot of competition. 
And it does 19- sound like the current tech patent disputes, doesn't it? It's uh, absolutely. We've we've had legal disputes over technology throughout history. It's just the technology keeps changing. So this was technology back in the early 20th century. And in 1920, there was a company called the Baltimore Talking Board, which was a competitor to the Ouija board. And they actually sold Ouija boards. Um, It's not clear whether or not they licensed the name. They probably did. But at any rate, the IRS came along and said, this is really a game and you have to pay um, taxes on it. And they said, no, we don't consider it a game. It's a spirit communication device. So they uh, went to court. And they went clear up the line until they appealed their case to the United States Supreme Court. And the media was really expecting quite a field day over this. But the uh, Supreme Court, perhaps wisely, decided to reject the case and not take it on, which validated the lower court ruling. And uh, so the boards have been considered games and toys ever since. So because of that, now it went through places like what? Parker Brothers. Parker Brothers made the Ouija board when I bought mine, and now it's Hasbro? Yes. Um, The patent for the board changed hands a number of times uh, in the early days, and it wound up under the control of a man named William Fold. And he managed to consolidate all of the rights uh, under his own name, even kind of cut his brother Isaac out of the action and started a big family feud. But the board went up and down um, in its in its own fortunes up through the 50s and 60s. And in the 1960s, uh, had a resurgence in popularity. And at that point, uh, the board was sold to Parker Brothers. And then uh, Parker Brothers was, um, let's see, I think they were acquired by... Well, there were several changes of hands before Hasbro got them in the early 1990s. So now it's part of the um, Otonka. Uh, Parker Brothers got um, uh, acquired by uh, let's see. Parker Brothers got acquired by General Mills, and then General Mills. Merged okay, so let me get, understand this now. So you could buy a Ouija board and buy some cereal. <laughs> they should have put. Uh, they should have made big boxes and put the board in the cereal. Okay, so but, yeah, let's General have General Mills a Ouija then, board. and then it winds Let... up with Tonka, and then uh, yeah. goes on to Hasbro. So they've had it since 1991. Okay, but basically, it is considered a toy. It is, yes. So uh, it's sure. an it's an entertainment device. Although some people who get very serious about the Ouija board would never call it a toy. They consider it to be a very um, serious device to open up a doorway to the spirit world. How many of these things are being sold in uh, you know in the modern day now? I mean, is it still a, a viable, popular product for, for the company? It must be. At its peak, it was outselling Monopoly, and I don't have exact figures, but Monopoly has reigned as the biggest selling board game for quite some time, and now it's slipped below Monopoly. But uh, whenever we have a horror film that comes out uh, where the Ouija board has a presence, unfortunately, as a demonic device usually, uh, that does send the board back into popularity. It's A lot of people like the idea of playing with something dangerous. Uh, you know, we'll get into that later, the misperception surrounding it. But uh, I, I'm, I'm just uh, intrigued that it's, it's had so much staying power. And that it's still something that you can go out and buy today, and it's uh, you know it's 130, almost 120 something years old. It's amazing. Most of the people who start with this device do so for entertainment. And in fact, when uh, Rick and I were collecting stories for the book, and I still get them, usually by email. Um, many of the stories are told about people who had exper- weird experiences when they were a teenager. And um, many adults have weird experiences, too. But um, it's been a favorite device of uh, kids to say, hey, let's see what happens. Let's get a Ouija board out, and maybe we'll get a thrill. It's a party device. And a lot of times nothing happens. Um, Many times accurate information comes across the board. But a lot of times people have really frightening experiences, too. (laughs) And get frightening messages that they act act upon, which uh, (laughs) I'm sure you can... Come up with oh, some that's, examples of that. that's even the weirdest ones in there. Stuff that goes to court that becomes a major part of uh, you know real high profile trials, even murder trials, that sort of thing. Well, what do you think, Rosemary? Do you th- let's look at the actual functionality of it, and how, you know, with all this research that the two of you have done, 
and you've actually used the board and talked to numerous people that have used it. What do you think is actually going on with it? Is it is it something that's being led by the subconscious of, of the actual participants, or do you, do you actually feel that there is some sort of connection to some other other realm? I do believe that uh, in many cases people make a genuine connection to the spirit realm. Uh, we can't rule out that there are cases involving subconscious movement. Uh, you place your hands on a pointer uh, on this board and ask the spirits to, through your hands, move the pointer around to spell out letter by letter uh, messages. Uh, you can point to goodbye, yes, no, and numbers as well. And in many cases, uh, there may be subconscious, um, you know, subconscious intent on a certain answer that um, impulses take over. It's called the idea motor effect that you might not even be aware of the fact that you're inf influencing the movement of this device yourself. Yeah, but on the other hand, to move. it's very easy to move, too. We must stress that when the lightest bit of pressure will make that planchette move. Uh, it can, but I have had many Ouija board sessions uh, where I've had my hands on the pointer and so has another person, and it's hardly moved at all, no matter how much yeah. you, you want it to start yeah, spelling something out. But um, I do think that in other cases, uh, something else takes over, and this seems to be for the for the problematic cases, this seems to tap into what I would call low level astral realm where you're more likely to get trickster spirits masquerading as whatever you want rather than um, you know dead uh, Aunt Sarah or uh, some high level spirit. In many cases, the messages start out friendly. Uh, there may even be accurate information that somebody can validate. And then uh, just when you've sort of given your, your trust over to this process, uh, usually through repeated use, the messages suddenly take a nasty turn. And um, people can have quite a lot of psychological destabilization at that point. Oh, boy, psychological destabilization. I'm going to ask you about that when we come back from our break. The book by Rosemary Ellen Guiley with Rick Fisher is called Ouija Gone Wild, and it's subtitled Shocking True Stories. And I guess we should look at the shocking stories coming up in our next segment. With Gene and Chris, you're in The Paracast. America's number one source for independent talk radio for over a decade. We are the GCN Radio Network. If you want to get your website online and you need reliable service, first-class service at the lowest possible price, there's only one place to go. Well, DreamHost has a special promotion with our show where they'll offer you unlimited disk space, unlimited bandwidth, one-click web apps such as WordPress, 24-7 support. You can save over $55. You want to know how? Go to DreamHost.com slash radio, DreamHost.com slash radio. Fate back magazine provides true reports of the strange and unknown. Keep up with the latest on angels and miracles, psychic phenomena, ghosts, UFOs, life after death, and much, much more. To receive your free issue of Fate magazine, call now at 1-800-728-2730 or visit their website at www.fatemag.com. That's 1-800-728-2730. What are you waiting for? Your fate awaits. Hello? Congratulations. For what? For losing all that weight. How'd you do it so fast? ASAP. ASAP what? What's that mean? Are you ready to get as skinny as possible, as soon as possible, as simple as possible, and as sexy as possible? I'm listening. Then get with the ASAP program. It's real and it works. No smooth talk, no slick advertising, and no exaggerated claims of success. I've got to know more. Welcome to ASAP, as slim as possible. Whether you have 10, 20, or 50 pounds to lose, ASAP is your weight loss answer. ASAP targets the abnormal fat reserves and makes them available to be burned as fuel and contains no caffeine or hormones. Order ASAP at wholesale prices or join the team to share the business with others. Visit GCNteam.com or call 877-878-4203. GCNteam.com or call 877-878-4203. Lose weight and look great with ASAP as slim as possible. 
The man who predicted the fall of communism is now predicting the fall of capitalism. He's dined with the Rockefellers, hung out with the Clintons, banged heads with the Beltway, and inspired companies, movements, and empires that have brought forth revolutionary change. He sat shoulder to shoulder with figures like George Bush Sr., Steve Forbes, Margaret Thatcher, and Boris Yeltsin, to name but a few. And his volume of work set out his groundbreaking financial newsletter, Strategic Investment, was so far ahead of its time, it helped transform not just the fates and fortunes of thousands of investors, but also the fates and fortunes of entire nations. For the first time in 17 years, he's back once again with his first controversial video presentation. Go to fallofcapitalism.com to watch him reveal a landmark development, which he believes will set off the most violent economic reversal in history, one that carries the power to bring down the entire capitalist system. Go to fallofcapitalism.com to watch his controversial video before the powers that be wipe it from the internet. Again, it's www.fallofcapitalism.com. Let's keep preparedness simple. Do you need stuff for disasters? Of course you do. For over 15 years, DisasterStuff.com has, well, stuff for disasters. See? Easy to remember. DisasterStuff.com. Want free shipping on a new Berkey water filter? DisasterStuff.com is the official Berkey in-stock shipping center. Lots of folks want an EMP Faraday bag to protect sensitive electronics during a solar or nuclear event. Now for a limited time, all survival gear purchases over $75 include a free 8 by 8 inch EMP Faraday bag. Just enter promo code EMP bag when you check out at disasterstuff.com. We're also a country living grain mill authorized dealer. Plus, we offer freeze dried foods by Alpine Air and Wise Foods. We also carry emergency kits, survival seeds, and much more. Preparedness should be simple, and it is. Just remember disasterstuff.com. Freedom through self reliance and personal responsibility. This is Leslie Kane, and I'm with the Coalition for Freedom of Information, and you are listening to the Paracast. With Gene and Chris, you're in the Paracast, and Chris is speaking to us from a location where they're having a rather intense lightning storm. So if he starts glowing or sparkling or disappears, that's the reason. Right, Chris? You're right. It's really blazing outside, boy. I love this time of year got the monsoon back in arizona we have rosemary ellen guiley the book is ouija gone wild shocking true stories and we hinted at this rosemary that some of the stories involving a ouija board aren't just seeing silly displays with the planchette silly messages yes no whatever something more sinister explain we have uh, cases in a number of different categories where people have made very irrational, even criminal decisions. Murders, uh, people have committed suicide, invested and lost fortunes, married, divorced, abused other people, gone AWOL from the Army. I mean, you name it, um, people have pinned irrational decisions on messages through the Ouija board. Now, in many of these cases, uh, I strongly suspect that people are inclined to believe certain things or they're contemplating certain actions and they get some sort of communication, whether it's genuine or not, that validates that inclination and then away they go. They seem to, to um, lack some common sense. For example, uh, committing murder because spirits told you in a message uh, that that was a good thing to do. Are we saying then, Rosemary, that the Ouija board becomes the excuse for the crime? It does, yes. And in fact, uh, in some of the cases, people have testified in court that the Ouija board was to blame for their actions. And of course, this doesn't sit well with the judge and jury. Well, why would you believe it, right? Well, exactly. And, in fact, there was one case from the early 20th century. It wasn't a murder case, but it was uh, about uh, an allegation of theft. And this crazy case, this couple goes away, and when they come home, they find that their pantry has been raided of stuff like sugar. And, you know, nothing major is taken from the house, just you know, sugar and there's some foodstuffs. And they immediately accuse uh, some a, a neighbor of doing this, and start spreading the word that this woman is a thief and broke into their house and whatnot. And she got very upset and wanted a retraction, and they wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't do that, so she sued them. And uh, the judge ruled that uh, the Ouija board, you know, could not be held accountable 
uh, because, the, you know, the woman consulted a Ouija board, and the Ouija board said, yes, the neighbor did it. Um, and the judge said, uh, you know, that's ridiculous, and just, you know, threw it out of court. We have some uh, frightening cases where juries have have consulted Ouija boards, and uh, there was a case in England from the 1990s, a murder case. It was a double homicide, and a man had killed uh, an insurance agent and his wife. Um, the charge was that he had done it for money because the, the man was known to keep sums of money in the house. And uh, while the jury was deliberating, they apparently had some drinks in their sequestered hotel, and uh, one of them got out a Ouija board and asked uh, whether or not the uh, the victim was, or the, uh, the accused was guilty, and the board said, vote guilty. Uh, so they did, and somehow this got out into the media, and of course, um, the the defending lawyer demanded a retrial, which which he got. He was reconvicted, but um, it's kind of scary to think that uh, people who hold that kind of responsibility might be using any kind of divination device to ask whether or not someone is innocent or guilty rather than letting the evidence speak. Well, Don't use tarot cards. And who it knows what goes on? It doesn't make the lawyers on. look very good in that, in, that, uh, in that case. <laughs> if the lawyers can't convince you and you have to go to something like that, then, uh, boy, that's time for a new trial. Well, if the lawyer says, if the gloves don't fit, you must acquit, what's your next step in that trial? Well, you go get the, out the Ouija board to break it get out, out the and say Ouija he's board. innocent. <laughs> There was a, another case, one of my favorite cases was from the 1930s, a Midwestern case where a woman suspected that her husband was having an affair. And so she gets out the Ouija board and the Ouija board says, yes, a man's having an affair with a woman next door, just as she suspected. And so uh, she's so upset about this and thinks that, you know, this is the absolute truth. So she gets her daughter from her first marriage, and she and and her daughter attack the husband. His name is Herbert. They they attack him, chain him to a bed, and start torturing him. Uh, they beat him with a whip. They burn his feet with a hot poker. They stab him with a dagger to get him to confess that he's had this affair, and he kept insisting, no, he ha hasn't. Uh, they starved him and kept torturing him until finally he signed a confession just to get them to stop. Uh, so they were, you know, momentarily appeased, and then he found his moment, more or less, that he'd been waiting for, and he managed to escape. Well, they caught him and dragged him back and chained him to the bed and started the whole thing over again. And this time, he was when he got free, he was so enraged himself that he killed his wife. So, so maybe he wasn't play. guilty the first time, but he got so enraged that he did something bad. So Herbert, the husband then, was charged with murder. And uh, his uh, story just, you know, made incredible headlines. Uh, and he said there was no affair. He said, I just confessed that to get them to stop. Well, all charges were dropped against him. But uh, here were these two women uh, torturing this man because the spirit said that he was having an affair, which he probably wasn't anyway. The spirits, right. <laughs> well, that's so, the problem, I think, when you have a device like this. You could use it as an excuse, can't you? I think that's what happens in these extreme cases. Now, there's another very peculiar case from the 1990s, early 1990s, where a group of um, intelligence, uh, military intelligence um, oh, the Gulf personnel, Bridge, of course. that they went AWOL uh, because they, got med they started using the Ouija board, and the spirit started telling them, uh, allegedly, that they were destined to be some sort of saviors and heralds of the apocalypse, the, you know, the coming uh, trials and tribulations, and they had to get out of the military. Well, they couldn't get regular discharges. There was no way they could get out, so they went AWOL. And they managed to get to Florida, where um, the jig was up when one of them got arrested uh, for a broken tail light. And uh, that's what got the, unraveled the whole thing. They were all rounded up. And so there they were. Uh, you know, they had deserted the Army um, because they were convinced by these messages that they had uh, a bigger mission. Yeah, Vance Davis, uh, it's a very interesting story. He went on to become Richard Hoagland's uh, Masonic uh, expert, uh, Masonic historian and expert. And 
actually co-presented with Hogan right after the Phoenix Lights at a huge gathering down in Phoenix. Well, I always found it very interesting that uh, that Richard Hogan should pick one of the Gulf Breeze Sixes and and you know put the the tag of Masonic Scholar on him, charge an incredible amount of money per ticket and pack an auditorium full of people to listen to to an Ouija board wielding uh, ex military intelligence guy. Just I don't know. It's uh, quite quite a uh, pretty interesting story and and one that uh, I, I think has been overlooked and in ufology to some degree, because there's a lot of UFO connection type stuff that, that is involved there. How, how about some other uh, accounts? Well, we have uh, accounts of people um, leaving fortunes um, to certain individuals because spirits told them, spirits speaking on the Ouija board told them to do so. There was a woman who uh, left uh, a sizable inheritance to an entity or personality that was she was communicating with on the Ouija board that there was no evidence that this person existed in the physical at all. And uh, yet she considered him a confidant or companion or whatever uh, and left all this money to him. And, and, of course, the surviving relatives contested the will. And they, I will have to find did. out what happened when they contested the will because she left to someone who theoretically did not exist. And this isn't quite the same as perhaps leaving it to the family pet. At least there you'll have someone who is taking care of the pet and probably getting a lot of money to do that. We are talking about Ouija boards and the ramifications with Rosemary Ellen Guiley. With Gene and Chris, you're in... The Paracast. Are you tired of searching for great talk radio? Something more important. Search no more. We are the GCN Radio Network. We also have swag. You know, we have all these exclusive Paracast things that you can buy. We've got like, I guess, 60 or so different items. And entails T-shirts, sleeves for notebook computers, iPad cases, mouse pads, the Paracast Jumbo Tote Bag, all sorts of T-shirts and jackets and stuff like that for men and women. We have a Paracast aluminum water bottle. All this stuff, you go to store.theparacast.com, store.theparacast.com. What makes it special is that the items are the best quality, you know, great T-shirts, fabrics, and they have our official logo on them. That's what makes them special in multiple sizes and colors. We even have stuff for children. Stuff for women, stuff for men. We have all sorts of sizes, like small up to X large. A lot of good stuff. That's the swag from the Paracast. If you go to store.theparacast.com, stop by and take a shopping tour. That's the sound of your door being kicked in by an intruder with a single kick. That's the sound of the same door now protected by the Door Sentinel at MySafeDoor.com. Go to MySafeDoor.com right now and watch the amazing video. At MySafeDoor.com, you'll learn how to turn your home into a fortress with the Door Sentinel. 16 kicks later, and the Door Sentinel is still holding strong. MySafeDoor.com. That's MySafeDoor.com. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. If you owe the IRS, you can't make the problem go away without professional help. But with the help of Dan Pilla, you can get your problem solved. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla, and I've been solving tax debt problems for 30 years, and I can help you too. We can stabilize IRS collection action and get your tax debt reduced, sometimes completely eliminated. And if you received a 1099 from a bank because of mortgage or other debt forgiveness, the vast majority of the time, I can show you how to completely erase it so you pay no taxes on what the IRS will consider to be taxable income. Call us for a free consultation to discuss the many possibilities. Call 1-800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-N-O-T-A-X. Or go to my website at taxhelponline.com. Dan Pilla has been protecting taxpayers from the IRS for three decades, and he can help you. 
Call us today, 800-346-6829. That's 800-34-NO-TAX. Utopia Silver understands that mainstream medicine and the rising cost of health care can financially destroy any family. We simply cannot afford to get sick. The only option is to stay healthy. Americans are learning that ill health is not caused by a deficiency of drugs. It's usually the result of a deficiency of minerals, vitamins, proper nutrition, and exercise. UtopiaSilver.com offers colloidal silver and healing protocols for vaccine and radiation poisoning, arthritis, insomnia, and more. If you're sick of unconstitutional government mandates, then stand up now and say no. The time is growing short to put this evil genie back in its bottle. Join Utopia Silver in promoting good health and fighting for our God-given health care rights. Visit utopiasilver.com, U-T-O-P-I-A silver.com, or call 888-213-4338. That's 888-213-4338. This is Jacques Vallée, and you're listening to the podcast, The Gold Standard of Paranormal Radio. So Chris tells me it came pretty close over there, a yeah, lightning hey, storm. It's blowing. Oh, it's really coming down out there. And you love the monsoon, right, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so does the environment. Hey, rain in the desert is a good thing, Gene, as you know. Yes, we got some pretty crazy storms in Phoenix. Those of you who don't live in Phoenix, which is 99.99% of our audience, will look up the weather forecast and the results. We have Rosemary Ellen Guiley, who is in another part of the country. The book is called Ouija Gone Wild. Do you get a lot of rain where you are now? Well, I'm in Seattle, and uh, it's been nice so far. They sent the rain to us. There you go. Wow, that was a big one. Isn't that wild? I can hear yeah. that on my end. Yeah, it's, oh man, it's, it's coming down, you know, within a couple hundred yards and all over. This <laughs> is great. Uh oh, maybe I'll start glowing and, and maybe all of a sudden I'll start speaking in tongues and we'll have to take notes and uh, you can start asking me questions and I'll come up with, with answers. Well, we can communicate with Chris with the Ouija board. <laughs> well, only if he crosses over. <laughs> All right, so let's go back to this crazy case that you told us about in our last segment where someone leaves the fortune or whatever the inheritance is to someone who she contacted from the Ouija board. And, of course, the relatives contested this. Now, I can always use that excuse, of course, the fact that I got very little money from my brother when he died. It may be because he either he hated me, didn't think I deserved the money, or his Ouija board told him that. Ah, I'll use that excuse. Well, this case uh, occurred in um, uh, the 1950s. and Well, that's when she died. She died around the, um, 1955 or so. Her name was Helen. And she married a wealthy insurance broker and um, had about $170,000, $80,000 to her name when she died. But she'd been fascinated by spiritualism and... Um, Earlier in the, the 20th century, she communicated with this entity or personality who identified himself as John Gale Forbes, and they became quite close uh, through the Ouija board. When Helen died, she specified in her will that her money was to go to this John Gale Forbes, or if he could not be found, to his heirs. Well, now, he had told her at one point in his communications that he was in the spirit world himself, But there was no evidence that this person ever existed, uh, and he could not be found. There were no records of any heirs of his, and uh, so all of her relatives who got cut out of the will were very unhappy about this, and they had to go to court to contest the will. She was eventually uh, ruled uh, posthumously to be have been mentally incompetent when she made out the will, and the money was split up uh, about... Um, nine ways to surviving heirs. And uh, some of them lived in Washington State, in fact. Uh, So they were happy about that uh, resolution. But what was going through her head to leave money to someone that she didn't even know ever existed? Right. Wow. What was the motivation? She must have really had quite a torrid uh, affair with the spirit world to uh, make that decision. That seems a little bit. 
he uh, he wrote her poetry, the spirit uh, transmitted poetry to her, and uh, this was while her own husband was alive. In fact, in fact, her husband got very offended th- at these communications, like she had some sort of, you know, suitor who was competing with him for for his wife. Uh, but she was quite enamored with this and carried on with it even after her husband died. Well, maybe he should have taken the, taken the hint and started uh, writing poetry for his wife or at least finding someone. And pretending <laughs> like it was or well, maybe that, he that should have, have divorced a... her a long time ago because she was wacko. Or broken the board <laughs> or something. Uh, but uh, yeah, really. we found... I got your Ouija board right here. Crack. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we laugh, but uh, we also found cases uh, where people tried to dispose of the board and had a difficult time doing so. Oh, uh, pray tell. Uh, well, um, I'm, uh, the case that I called immediate, immediately to mind uh, was given to me by a researcher I know. And, and I do want to stress that uh, some of the stories that were told to me came from colleagues in the paranormal field, people that I know are very well grounded and know the ropes about the paranormal, and yet they've still had strange experiences. And uh, this came from Eric Altman, who founded the Pennsylvania Bigfoot Society, and I've known Eric a good long time. And uh, when he was in college, he was dating a girl who got uh, wrapped up in the Ouija board with her friends, and it followed the classic pattern of interesting, funny, entertaining communications that suddenly took a very dark turn, and everybody started getting frightened because uh, the board was telling them nasty things and that they were going to die and they were having nightmares. Well, she wanted to get rid of the board, so one night uh, he and uh, his girlfriend uh, put the board in a bag, um, the board and a plan- and the planchette, put some rocks in the bag, and drove out to a lake. It was winter time, and they were in the dark, and he tossed this bag onto the lake. He said, I heard the ice break and the bag go through. And so he gets back in the car, and they're leaving the scene, and his girlfriend starts freaking out because she finds rattling around under the front seat the planchette, which was supposed to be in the bag that had gone into the lake. And Eric said, I put them in in the bag. Uh, I know they went in the bag, and yet here's the planchette. So he grabs the planchette, breaks it up, throws it out the window. So they go back. She goes back to her dorm room, and then the next day he gets a frantic call from her. She's sobbing and crying. He goes over to see her, and what's sitting outside the door of her dorm room but this bag um, from the lake with the Ouija board in it. And at first he thought, oh, come on, you know, you and your friends, you've got to be playing a trick on me. Somebody drove out there and somehow went out to the middle of this ice-bound lake, and and retrieve this thing. He, you know, we didn't know how that could happen, but that was the only thing he could think of. And she insisted, no, that it was sitting there when she got up in the morning and opened the door. She found the bag outside of her door. This is so like this the time, classic horror movie. It is. Sure. And so this time he broke the board into pieces and uh, threw it into uh, a garbage disposal. He said, I never saw the board again. But she and her friends who had been using the Ouija board continued to have some problems with um, nightmares, and they felt something was watching them. And, uh, and after some time, he, uh, the two of them stopped seeing each other, so he didn't know exactly how long it took for this to resolve. But uh, we've had other cases like that where people have had difficulty disposing of the board. Now, the stories about, oh, I, you know, I tried to burn the board and it wouldn't burn, so it must be, be demonic, uh, those are um, fairly explainable uh, if they attempted to destroy one of the old boards made out of masonite. Uh, now they're just uh, kind of a very thin cardboard, but the masonite uh, resists burning, and uh, you wouldn't be able to get that to burn very well in a fire. So it's not due to any psychic phenomena. It's just the physical property. Yes, in okay. that particular case. Uh, Now, I had a case where uh, I wasn't trying to get rid of a board, but uh, I have about seven or eight boards, and uh, I look for them in, you know, thrift stores and yard sales and occasionally online. I like the older boards. And um, I I acquired a board where the planchette went missing for about two years, and I call it my haunted board. Uh, Went missing? It went missing. Oh, 
and it disappeared. Um, and um, I was just about to at the point where I thought, well, I might as well see if I can buy a spare planchette uh, to replace this one. And it, it uh, reappeared in the box. Uh, I put the, the board away in storage uh, because it didn't have its planchette. And then when I got it out, and about two years had elapsed from the time the planchette had disappeared, and the planchette was in the bo- in the box with the board. Okay, you no didn't have a companion or someone who might have been playing a practical joke on you. No, okay. um, I had been living by myself, and I discovered it when I moved uh, because I put the board away because missing the planchette, I wasn't going to use it. And uh, I moved, and that's when I got the board out to pack it up, and uh, everything was there, the, the uh, uh, pointer and the board. Whoa. I, mean, how do you explain I have no explanation for it. I'm just saying whoa because I don't know what to say about this because we know that you're telling us something that happened to you, and I don't know what kind of explanation. I think some people on our forums would like to make up an explanation or maybe that you're just putting us on. But you're not the kind of person who just puts no, people on. You're not like a Jim Mosley or someone. You're somebody <laughs> who's very serious about stuff like that. Not that you don't have a sense of humor and don't laugh, but, you know, when it comes to this subject, it's a serious thing. We have Rosemary Ellen Guiley, and she wrote this book with Rick Fisher called Ouija Gone Wild. And the weather is wild in Arizona with Gene and Chris. Until the lightning strikes, you're in the Paracast. <laughs> The GCN Radio Network, providing the world with hard-hitting talk radio. G-C-N. Great talk radio starts here. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. If you'd like to listen to GCN programs on the go, I have great news. GCN has created a Droid and iPhone application, and it's free. Just as easy as going to GCNlive.com, click on the banner, and download. Before you know it, you'll be listening to your favorite hard-hitting GCN shows, live or on demand, right on your Droid or iPhone, 24-7 and on the go. So download the Droid and iPhone app free by clicking on the banner at GCNlive.com. Thanks again for listening to GCNlive.com. Again, that's GCNlive.com. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. I'd seen the Longevity products work for many others. And so I bought a bunch of them, started using them, had a little bit of results, but I wasn't following the regimen every day. But Aaron Dykes in my office did and lost more than 60 pounds. When I saw those results, I said, I better follow my own advice. I started taking the Longevity products, and it's been incredible. 37 pounds in two months. Our bodies are amazing, and God gave us an incredible gift. But if our body doesn't have the tools it needs, all of the vitamins, all of the minerals, and the other key essential trace elements, we're not going to be healthy. Folks, this isn't hype. I only bring to my listeners products that I've tried myself that I truly believe in. And the amazing supplements available at InfoWarsTeam.com have certainly delivered my life. I hope you'll give them a try. Go to InfoWarsTeam.com today and order your first canister of Beyond Tangy Tangerine Complete Multivitamin Mineral Complex Dietary Supplement. That's InfoWarsTeam.com. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. Well, Chris has survived through the second hour of the show, yeah, although it may be touch and go over. for a while, huh? Yeah, now the worst is over. It moved away a little bit. It was right overhead, and we, were, we were, had good, large, pea-sized tail coming down there for a while. But now it's all gone to Phoenix, right? Yeah, it's headed your way. The book is by Rosemary Ellen Guiley, and it's called Ouija Gone Wild. I want to ask you, Rosemary, we've heard frightening stuff going on here, really weird stuff. We've heard the case of a woman who left her fortune to someone, some entity or being with whom she communicated on the Ouija board. 
Any real funny stories? Um, well, let's see. A uh, number of people have uh, ac- gotten um, accurate information about who they're going to marry. Uh, and advice, uh, people have gotten helpful advice. Oh, there was one funny story where um, a, a, this was from um, earlier in the 20th century. And a lot of these cases would would get reported in the news media because the Ouija board was a novelty up until about the mid 20th century. And so a lot of strange cases would uh, wind up in the media. But she called up the police one night and uh, insisted that a triple murder had taken place in her home and the bodies were in the attic. So, of course, the police go rushing over to her house. They search the entire house, including the attic, and uh, no bodies. Not a drop of blood, no sign of any mayhem whatsoever. And she, she said, well, I know that triple murder was committed here because the Ouija board said so. And so she, you know, hey, the Ouija board said so. It had to be true. There had to be yeah. three bodies somewhere in the attic. <sighs> People, they just, they just don't have the uh, sense that they were born with, I guess. Well, there's, there are some very intriguing cases where crimes have been solved where missing persons have been found. Um, there's, there's a number of interesting examples of how it, it kind of indicates that there may be something to this on some level that we don't quite understand. Why don't you give us some examples of some of the more amazing cases? And there are a number of them in your book. There are, and this is why we can't be real black and white about something like the Ouija board. We can't say it's all bad. We can't say it's all good. There seems to be a mix of... Um, accuracy of truth and helpfulness mixed in with some of these wild cases and even the the truly frightening ones. There have been some cases where uh, people have gone missing and people have consulted the Ouija board and they've taken the information to the, the police and if a law enforcement agencies follow through on it, that person is found. There was a, a case of a missing husband. The woman said, um, my husband's been missing, and uh, he may have uh, stepped out on her. Who knows? And he's in New York City. I know he's in New York City because the Ouija board said he went to New York. And he was indeed found in New York, right where the Ouija board said um, he was going to be found. There are other cases where... Um, Information has been given about given about missing persons, and it, it is not borne out. There were stories from the early 20th century about uh, law enforcement agencies and personnel um, using the Ouija board, or at least acknowledging it as a source of potentially helpful information. I don't think you'd find anyone wanting to uh, acknowledge that today. So the conventional wisdom has it here that it's a plaything when someone moves the planchette, it's subconscious or deliberate? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, are you saying in every case it's subconscious? No, I'm or? saying that's what people tend to think. Yes, most people are going to say that this is a product of your imagination, um, you're doing it yourself, and you just don't realize it. That's, that's what most skeptics would say. And... I think that another case can be made that there is genuine spirit activity through the board and that sometimes people do come into contact with entities that can wreak quite a bit of havoc with them. Now, one thing I did notice when I was interviewing people about especially their problematic experiences, that the people who tend to have the most response from the board and also the most problems with the board are either themselves or working it with someone who have natural mediumistic ability. And sometimes they don't realize it, uh, especially um, if they've never tried spirit communications before. But people who have a natural mediumistic ability are able to tune in to the spirit world much more quickly no matter what they use, whether it's a pendulum, a Ouija board, a Frank's box, automatic writing, whatever. Tell our listeners what a Frank's box is. Uh, Frank's boxes are a radio sweep device that scan the AM, usually the AM band of radio, very rapidly, like if you had a manual tuner and you just kept turning it and turning it, so that you get a jumble of radio broadcast sounds going on in the background. And this noise matrix, like white noise, seems to facilitate real-time spirit communication where spirit voices are sometimes heard 
on top of the radio scan. And it's, uh, Frank's box is considered to be uh, a spirit communication device. Some people have even called them electronic Ouija boards. Now, with the Ouija board, are we thinking it has a power of its own or it's just a focal point that you concentrate on it and you bring forth whatever internal abilities you have? Ouija board is a tool, just like any other spirit communications tool. It's neutral. And I think that the results are uh, a product of primarily the, the people operating the board, sometimes people who are in the group participating in the group mind going on, and the environment, because environments can be highly charged as well. And uh, if there's a lot of spirit activity in a place or you're in one of these natural portal areas that seems to have the right and geophysical properties um, where a lot of spirit activity has been documented over a long period of time, uh, those can influence your results as well. Now, as you were talking, I was looking over at Amazon.com to see what's involved in getting a Ouija board. They've got one that's glow-in-the-dark capability. They've got one with a puck, believe it or not. They've got a large one made of tempered glass, a tempered glass cutting board. Okay, and they've got the traditional Parker Brothers game, and I guess it's a vintage one for $225. Wow. Yes, some of the older boards sell uh, for quite a good chunk of money. If you manage to find one from the early 20th century, those can go for uh, way more than that. Now, the one that, that Hasbro sells now is the Glow in the Dark, and uh, the patent on Ouija boards actually expired in 1908. I mean, anybody can make a talking board, the generic device where you put numbers and letters and the selection of words on a board with a pointer. Anybody can do that, but it, you still cannot um, the name is, the name legally... Is you, the name Ouija and uh, the mystifying oracle are trademarked, as is the design of the Ouija board. You can't exactly copy that. Now, so I are, had one of the original ones, the mystifying oracle William Fold talking board set by Parker Brothers, and you can get one now. They have four of them for eighty nine fifty five. I missed something here. So either this one or the Parker Brothers game, you could possibly make a little bit of money. They even there have a many, mouse pad, by artists. the way. They have a mouse pad. They have a wall clock. An Ouija board mouse pad. That's a great idea. You know what? We should get a hold of them and offer that as a premium for listeners at the Paracast. <laughs> I'm looking it. at it right now. There, are a, there are a lot of The Ouija board has wound up on just about any device, uh, art, clothing, article, toy, um, accessory, uh, you name it, uh, it's one of the most popular designs out there. And um, the official Ouija board design has uh, appeared on a lot of things. And then artists have, you know, uh, come up with their own take on the talking board and uh, created um, well, it's, it's like limited like edition card. boards. Yes, it's limited like edition card. boards. There's that many are many different types. Absolutely. And some of these get to be highly collectible. You know, they're signed and numbered. Uh, I have some of those myself. Oh. I'm going to talk about this further with this company that makes the mouse pad. I don't know if people use mouse pads as much anymore because you have all those optical mice and all this other stuff. And, of course, you can't get one. How about a case, an iPad case that looks like a Ouija board? We'll develop one of those. We have Rosemary Ellen Guiley joining us with Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. Ray Perkins, a reclusive veteran burned out from the Gulf War, lives tortured by relentless, perplexing nightmares. Nightmares of a horrific battle in deep space and of a mysterious woman suffering in agony for her devastated world. A woman not yet born, calling across centuries to him. Then... A coincidence leads him to his destiny, his chance to alter the universe. Attack, Attack. of the Rockwell. Rock the former fiction editor for Star Wars and Indiana Jones, Robert Simpson, writes, The soul of the novel Attack of the Rockoids lies in its heart and passion for building a convincing tale of a love that spans the galaxy. A thrilling story. Attack, Attack. of the Rockoids Rock is available now. Read a sample chapter and get a special discount off of the cover price at our website, rockoids.com. That's R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S 
Attack, Attack of the Rockwell, a novel in the grand science fiction tradition. We've all heard the phrase, don't judge a book by its cover, a wise saying for sure. Now apply that wisdom to nutrition. Don't judge milk by the animal. Camel milk, the best kept health secret ever. See for yourself at camelmilkforsale.com and look for the summer camel milk special. Loaded with health benefits far superior to other milk, camel milk has antibacterial, antiviral, and anti-tumor properties, is rich in B vitamins, and is three times higher in vitamin C than cow's milk, 10 times higher in iron. Plus, it contains 52 units of insulin-like proteins per liter, effectively lowering blood sugar levels. Many of our members testified that drinking camel milk reversed diabetes and greatly improved autism. Camel milk comes fresh or frozen from your trusted local family farm, shipped on dry ice to preserve freshness. Go to CamelMilkForSale.com now and look under products and pricing for the summer special with free bonus pints. That's CamelMilkForSale.com. Every day, nearly 3,000 families enter into foreclosure and face losing their home. If you're currently behind on your mortgage, you can still avoid foreclosure. You can save your home, but you need to act now. We're Allied State Foreclosure Services. We're experts in saving homes from foreclosure. With just one phone call to us, you can stop the foreclosure process, lower your monthly mortgage payments, and save your home. Call now. The call is free with no obligation. 1-800-597-8843. Call us if you've been threatened with foreclosure, denied loan modification, or missed a payment on your mortgage. If you've been a victim of a predatory loan or are upside down on your mortgage, even if you've lost your job and you're worried about losing your home, don't wait. Call us now and let us help you save your home. You've worked hard to build a life with your family. Let us help you keep your home. Call now before it's too late. 1-800-597-8843. 1-800-597-8843. 1-800-597-8843. Hello? Congratulations. For what? For losing all that weight. How'd you do it so fast? ASAP. ASA what? What's that mean? Are you ready to get as skinny as possible, as soon as possible, as simple as possible, and as sexy as possible? I'm listening. Then get with the ASAP program. It's real and it works. No smooth talk, no slick advertising, and no exaggerated claims of success. I've got to know more. Welcome to ASAP, as slim as possible. Whether you have 10, 20, or 50 pounds to lose, ASAP is your weight loss answer. ASAP targets the abnormal fat reserves and makes them available to be burned as fuel and contains no caffeine or hormones. Order ASAP at wholesale prices or join the team to share the business with others. Visit GCNteam.com or call 877-878-4203. GCNteam.com or call 877-878-4203. Lose weight and look great with ASAP, as slim as possible. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. Man, there is a flash flood outside. The arroyo next to the house is raging with about three and a half, four feet of water. So basically, Chris is going to be talking and doing this show way steep in water, right? I hope not, <laughs> because I'm looking out, and boy, it looks like, uh, boy, you could get a kayak in that, and you could really whip down this arroyo. Oof. Tell our listeners like, what part of Arizona you're in, roughly speaking. Well, I'm, I'm right in West Sedona right now, and I'm towards the bottom of Airport Mesa, and all this water is funneling down Airport Mesa and hitting this, this arroyo, and it's a raging torrent right now, and it's about mm, 75 feet away from the house. We have Rosemary Ellen Guiley, who is at a place where she doesn't have raging water, but we're talking about raging Ouija boards. And just briefly, before we ended our last segment, I was talking about all the forms and shapes Ouija boards come in. I mentioned mouse pads, and I think we might consider maybe offering that as a premium on the PowerCast, have talked to the vendor. It would be fun. And that's the point here. For a lot of people, it's just an entertainment device. How many people, by the way, have bought Ouija boards over the years. Ever do a survey? Uh, I don't know exactly what the total number of boards have been sold, but uh, Uh, considering that it's one of the most popular uh, gaming devices out there for well over a century now, um, you know, we're definitely into the millions. Yeah, probably millions, you're right. 
gosh, I, I wish I wish I had the one I found uh, back in um, in college. Um, it didn't have a planchette, but it was the board. But it, it looked like it was from the twenties um, because it was the wood one. When did they stop making the the actual wood version? Uh, the wood ones went into um, I would say around the end of the twenties. Um, yeah, that's what I figured it was. Boy, I should have held on to that. Maybe the early 30s. Yeah, if you still had that, it it might be um, rather valuable. I, I don't. I think my roommate ended up with it. He used it to clean seeds. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> the spirits didn't like well, that. Yeah, we were, you know, we, were, we were wild college guys. You know, so what could we do? Well, I have fun. to think now about the things I sold or didn't retain, like early Spider-Man comic books. Wow, they'd be worth a lot of money. I didn't have one of the early action comics or Batmans, though. Yeah, I had one of the original Frisbees. It's worth a fortune now. God, no. I also had a, a Pluto platter, which is also worth a lot of money, which was the second uh, Frisbee. I was a real Frisbee fan. How about you? What, what other collectible things do you have that, that come from the occult realm? Uh, I'm sure you've got quite a collection of cards, Rosemary. What, what, what is your favorite uh, tarot deck? Well, my favorite tarot deck is uh, one I co-created with uh, artist Bob Place. It's the Alchemical Tarot. Uh, And that came out in the mid-1990s. We've just put out the third edition on that. And uh, because we're doing it ourselves now, we got our rights back, and so we're in total control. I want to Um, ask you very briefly. You call it tarot, but most people call it tarot. uh, It's pronounced both ways. I usually say tarot, but some people say tarot. It's like Ouija. Some people say Ouija, uh, and most people say Ouija. I was just Nobody looking really at the lettering. Knows. I mean, I didn't have people coming up to me and say, you have a Ouija board or a Ouija board? <laughs> <laughs> and actually, you know, uh, now that you bring it up, nobody really knows uh, the exact origin of right. uh, the name ask, or what it means. Where did that name come from? Where did the um, name come from? Does it have a meaning? or? Uh, Nobody really knows exactly how the name was conceived or uh, what exactly it means. There are just stories told. And in one story, one of the original patent uh, holders, Charles Kennard, who was the first one to to manufacture the board, uh, he said that, or, or the story goes, that he said that a spirit gave him the name and sent it meant good luck. And an, another story says, well, it means yes in French and German, we oui and ya, ja, in which case it would be pronounced a we ya board, which doesn't seem to make much sense, but that was one of the stories, too. But I'm going to buy myself a we ya board. A we ya board. Uh, William Fold, who was the man who really put the Ouija board on, on the map, he consolidated the power in the company and got the patent. And he wanted a lot of mystique around the board because that's what sold, mystery, fun, entertainment. And so he encouraged um, a, an aura of mystery and uncertainty about the board and its origins. Okay, so he was a marketing guy. He was. Uh, he didn't start out as a marketing guy. He actually worked his way up in the company. He was a varnisher and a painter, but he was very ambitious and very shrewd and made himself to be very indispensable in the company. And so when the principals uh, kind of wanted to get out of the business or cash in on their investments, he was more than happy to uh, step in and, and take over. And uh, he and his brother Isaac started out in a partnership and, and um, had a feud and split up, and his brother Isaac even started a competing company for a while until his brother shut him down legally. William Fold went on to really put the board on the map, and that was the 1920s. Uh, by 1927, he was dead. He was only in his mid-50s. He was um, trying to repair a flagpole on the, the roof of one of his manufacturing plants in Baltimore, fell, and uh, died of his injuries. Uh, he only had like some minor injuries and, and a broken rib, but on the way to the hospital, his uh, rib pierced his heart, and uh, that's what killed him. Oh, jeez. How about famous spiritualists uh, from the time, like the Fox sisters or some of the people that were friendly with uh, uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle? Or how about Houdini? I seem to recall a couple of uh, debunking uh, efforts that he made trying to dispel the the popularity of the board as being a truly uh, viable device uh, do we have any indication that some of the uh, you know the the movers and shakers within the spiritualist movement at the end of the 19th century and into the beginning of the 20th century did they ever utilize this 
I don't have any real good um, stories involving those personalities. And actually, those individuals would have considered something like the Ouija board competition because most of the uh, prominent mediums of the spiritualist days, uh, and that really started to peter out by about the 1930s, uh, they they were the star. Um, right. They were getting messages either mentally or through trance mediumship, through the manipulation of the voice, to speak to the spirit. So they were not relying on something like this. This was a, considered a device for the common person who didn't have, right. you know, the yeah. right touch. Yeah. <laughs> it's like your basic entry-level uh, divination uh, spiritualist tool, basically. Now, the, no, the no, Fox no. sisters, oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Uh, oh, well, I was, I was just going to comment, yeah, about the Fox sisters. Uh, I mean, in a way, they sort of used a crude form of, of Ouija me- methodology uh, when they started with the, the wrapping spirit in their home, you know, claiming right. their, you know, they could they could get messages. And in the beginning, they were spelling out messages letter by letter by getting the spirit to wrap once uh, and twice, you know, for yes and no, whether or not a letter was accurate. So it was a very crude and slow form of letter by letter communication that the Ouija board really streamlined. Of course, I guess the real skeptics here would say, well, if the spirit world is so powerful, why can't they just talk? Why do they have to use these crazy implements? And that's a question that Rosemary Ellen Guiley will deal with as we get to our next segment. The book is Ouija Gone Wild, and the weather's gone wild near Sedona, Arizona. With Gene and Chris, you're in the America's number one source for independent talk radio for over a decade. We are the GCN Radio Network. Graphic Converter is the image manipulation tool for the rest of us. It does not use any database. You get full control of all your files. Want to view the images of a folder? Drag it into Graphic Converter, and a powerful browser opens up to show your image files. You could use it for slideshows. You could use it to import images from digital cameras or from scanners. Need to do some image editing? You can do that, too, in Graphic Converter. Also, print catalogs convert from so many formats i can't even list them download now to see if graphic converter is good for you like one and a half million other users guess what you could save money when you buy graphic converter use the coupon code night owl use the coupon code night owl to get a special price for graphic converter go to lemkesoft.com that's l-e-m-k-e soft.com lemkesoft.com l-e-m-k-e soft.com Now at DeseretFoodStore.com, sign up for a one-month supply of delicious food for only $99 with free shipping. That's right, only $99. Gourmet restaurant-style meals with a 30-year shelf life. Packaged in heavy-duty Mylar bags for easy transport and freshness. Meals like stroganoff, lasagna, teriyaki, five-bean chili, granola pancakes, and much more. Visit DeseretFoodStore.com, spelled D-E-S-E-R-E-T, FoodStore.com, or call 801-444-1444. Food for now, food for life. In a coming apart world, you need something to keep it tied together. That something is Atwood Rope, the highest quality rope made in the USA from exotic braids for military, rescue, arborists, shipyards, tow line, or boating. Quality rope at affordable prices you and your customers can depend on. Find a dealer or shop online at atwoodrope.net. Enter promo code RADIO to receive 100 feet of 550 paracord free with purchase. Atwood Rope, working to keep the world tied together. We all know there are secrets behind closed doors in every relationship, and one of the biggest is that men are losing libido or sexual desire, especially if you're a man over 40. The problem could be declining testosterone levels. Remember, it's testosterone that makes a man a man in every way. That's why we created TGen. TGen is an all-natural formula with ingredients proven to boost your own testosterone. Optimum testosterone levels mean better mood, energy, and of course, better sex life. Here's Gina from California. My husband tried one month of TGen, and we both noticed his desire increased right away. He felt the difference in his energy level. I certainly liked the other effects it had on him. Great product. And now for the first time, you can try TGen absolutely free for 30 days. Just pay shipping today and see the incredible results for yourself. Call 800-822-5941. 
800-822-5941. TGen works, or you simply don't pay. For your 30-day free trial, call 800-822-5941. 800-822-5941. Don't throw away leftovers. Instead, throw all your leftovers, vegetable peels, eggshells, coffee grounds, pizza crusts, and more into the Bokashi. If you love to garden and compost but don't like the hassle of turning a compost bin or the smell, then check out the EM Bokashi Food Waste Recycling System from Terraganics. Finally, a way to recycle all your food and plant waste safely and effectively and stop using fertilizers. The EM Bokashi Food Waste Recycling System. Rather than decomposition, the Bokashi system uses fermentation to break down waste, so it takes less time to create nutrient dense humus for crops or gardens with no turning and no obnoxious odors. To learn more and order your Bokashi online, visit Terraganics.com and click on the orange button. That's Terraganics.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com, or call 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Recycle all your food wastes in about six weeks with the Bokashi Food Waste Recycling System from Terraganics.com. Terraganics, life's getting better. This is Jim Mosley, editor of Saucer Smear, and I'm here to say a good word or two about the Paracast, which I believe is the gold standard of paranormal radio. Listen to it if you can. Not the sound of lightning striking. All about Ouija boards, Ouija Gone Wild, written by Rosemary Ellen Guiley and Rick Fisher. So I guess the question I asked, which is not meant to be sarcastic, it's meant to be a real question that skeptics might ask, which is, all right, if the spiritual world is so powerful, why use this kind of device? Why can't they just convey it more simply? I wish there was a good answer for that, Gene. And I think if, if we could get more direct communications more easily, we wouldn't, uh, we human beings would not have to invent all of these other devices as we have throughout history. From the beginning, we've wanted to penetrate these, uh, these barriers between the spirit world and, and the living and the dead, and it doesn't seem to be readily possible. We keep looking for ways to do it, and we don't get direct communication very easily. It only seems to come through certain individuals with a certain attunement at certain times and certain places. And we keep looking for ways to make it more reliable. And uh, the, the Ouija board combined that with entertainment. That was the, the genius behind the board, is that you had uh, something uh, that could be a serious communication device, but it was something that you could bring into the family environment and be in awe and wonder over. Come on, kids. Tonight's Ouija board night. Get your mom and let's have fun. In 1920... I think it was 1920 or sometime in the early 20s, Norman Rockwell put a cover on Saturday Post magazine of a young man and woman, um, and they're, they look like they're a courting couple, you know, that there's romance going on between them. And they're working a Ouija board, and they've got it on their knees are touching, they're facing each other, their knees are touching, they've got the board on their knees, and she's uh, looking off into space like she wants to know, you know, will he, won't he, you know, are we going to get married? And he's looking at her. And uh, you get this impression of uh, something that's a very wholesome sort of, of activity or entertainment, very different from the, the skewed picture that the media well, uh, painted the board today. So basically yeah. at that point it was a source of fun, and frolic or whatever, a way for two people to get more closer together, you know, knees touching and everything. And now demons will attack you if you unleash them. It's oh, really it's a shame how Hollywood. the board, yeah, yeah it's, it's a shame how the board has become demonized. And yes, people have had bad experiences, but people have bad experiences in all kinds of spirit communications. Hollywood has consistently used this board as a device to propel horror plots. You know, you can burn it, you can have planchettes fly across the room, you can have evil messages spelled out. It's very convenient. And um, the movies, The Exorcist and, and Witchboard, uh, really, I think, did the most to sway pop culture opinion that the board itself was somehow demonic and evil, which is definitely not the case. Yeah, it's just a, just a piece of cardboard. I mean, let's get let's get real. You know, we can put all sorts of intent and 
and focus and psychic energy I- into anything and have it have it become the focus of um, all sorts of positive and negative things. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the object itself is the cause or or the um, you know the the actual motivational force to have things happen, uh, either positive or negative. It's it's all the intent that goes into it that uh, is the important thing. I've I've been hearing for many years that certain people who may be psychically uh, fragile, vulnerable, uh, prone to to um, negativity, whether it's emotional or acting out uh, negative things, that they, they should stay away from a Ouija board because it tends to magnify tweakiness in particular individuals. Um, some of the stories uh, in your book kind of indicate that there may be some relevance to that. Uh, do you want to address that? I agree with you wholeheartedly on that, Chris, and that's uh, my opinion, too, that there are individuals who, and they seem to be drawn to the paranormal and occult, like, you know, moths to the proverbial flame, that any sort of paranormal activity derails them or, you know, is very psychologically distressing. They they want the experience, but then they can't handle the experience. And with something like the Ouija board being so readily available and brought out often as an entertainment device, these are some of the people then who who get engaged in these activities and then they start having problems. Uh, I have used a Ouija board on investigations. I don't consider it um, a very productive investigation tool, but I've experimented with a lot of devices. Uh, well, are you know are any of them reliable because you can't uh, really prove who you're communicating with in in most cases. Um, but yet I consider uh, you know I experiment with all sorts of devices. But yet I I recommend to people not to take these things on investigations because um, the individuals uh, involved in these sessions uh, are really more of the problem than. The device itself. It's their reactions. If some of them are bringing these subconscious fears about the Ouija board, they've been told that it's problematic or bad. Uh, anything that comes across the board is going to um, have a certain kind of effect on them. A self fulfilling prophecy, then? In many cases, yes. So if you and believe I... the Ouija board to be a source of evil or to bring forth evil entities, then maybe that's what you'll be in touch with. Well, if you believe it's fun, it's rewarding, it's uplifting, you'll contact beings that are more in that fashion. Well, you're certainly more likely to have a neutral experience or one that even if a problematic communicator came through, it wouldn't upset you and and, uh, send you into a tailspin of nightmares and sensations of being watched and things like that. Now, let's Uh, look at that particular part of it, which is the negative part where people have been affected psychologically. Do we have people who have really gone on to have to be treated or committed as a result? uh, We can speculate that, yes, there are people who have had to have some sort of counseling uh, as a result. Now, I, I will say in the defense of people who have had negative experiences, as I mentioned, some of these stories came from people that I consider to be very well grounded in the paranormal and very experienced in investigations, and they've still had experiences that caught them off guard. Now, they're, uh, none of these situations are black and white. They're complex. They involve a lot of psychological dynamics, too. But um, in the chapter uh, devoted to Zozo, now Zozo seems to be uh, an entity who is very, very nasty and prefers Ouija board communications or talking board communications. And um, we document some uh, distressing experiences that people have had with Zozo um, personalities. There's Zozo. Zozo seems to use a lot of names. Um, We uh, tell the story of Darren Evans, who is a person who really put Zozo on the map in terms of uh, collecting information about Zozo and stories and documenting the pattern. And Darren says by his own admission that, you know, he became uh, very preoccupied with the Ouija board and uh, was in touch with this entity named Zozo, which then dominated his life off the board. 
uh, it had a psychological influence on him. He felt that uh, it interfered in his family life, his relationship, his marriage. Uh, it deteriorated his mental state. He couldn't hold a job very well. And he said he went into a complete nervous breakdown at one point, and it took him years to get clear of it. So do we have any examples of a particular entity uh, claiming to come through and then having totally separate appearances of an entity totally unrelated to uh, other cases? Uh, I'm not sure I understand the question. Well, like, did somebody else uh, in, in some unrelated uh, session uh, who had no knowledge of Zozo, Zozo did, did, has somebody else? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, and, in fact, we have uh, some in the book as well. And... and we'll get into what's in the book, a couple of those descriptions. As we continue with Rosemary Ellen Guiley, it's about Ouija boards. With Gene and Chris, you're in The Paracast. <laughs> Are you tired of searching for great talk radio? Something more important. Search no more. We are the GCN Radio Network. Whether it's personal mail, whether it's business email, you want reliable, dependable delivery, freedom from spam, freedom from viruses. Well, Polaris Mail offers professional email hosting services for your personal or small business use. Each account uses 25 gigabytes of storage, an easy-to-use webmail interface, and full mobile sync. Sign up today for a 30-day free trial at PolarisMail.com, PolarisMail.com. So here's what happened. I was placing an order online. The site went down. It just stopped responding. It took hours before it returned, but I had already placed the order with another company. If your site goes down, you could lose business. And if you have a business or personal site, you'll want to know it's easy to run and it will stay online. At iWeb, your site is hosted on one of the most reliable networks in the world. Check it out. iWeb.com. That's iWeb.com. The man who predicted the fall of communism is now predicting the fall of capitalism. He's dined with the Rockefellers, hung out with the Clintons, banged heads with the Beltway, and inspired companies, movements, and empires that have brought forth revolutionary change. He sat shoulder to shoulder with figures like George Bush Sr., Steve Forbes, Margaret Thatcher, and Boris Yeltsin, to name but a few. And his volume of work set out his groundbreaking financial newsletter, Strategic Investment, was so far ahead of its time, it helped transform not just the fates and fortunes of thousands of investors, but also the fates and fortunes of entire nations. For the first time in 17 years, he's back once again with his first controversial video presentation. Go to fallofcapitalism.com to watch him reveal a landmark development, which he believes will set off the most violent economic reversal in history, one that carries the power to bring down the entire capitalist system. Go to fallofcapitalism.com to watch his controversial video before the powers that be wipe it from the Internet. Again, it's www.fallofcapitalism.com. Introducing a Diabetes Breakthrough, an easy, natural, organic way to bring relief to diabetics. Introducing MDS Forte, a concentrated super strength extract formulated for those who are looking for relief. What can MDS Forte do for you? MDS Forte reduces glucose levels safely and effectively, reduces cholesterol and triglyceride levels, increases HDL or good cholesterol while reducing LDL or bad cholesterol. MDS Forte reduces A1C, improves eyesight and circulation to the limbs, and helps with weight loss. Is non-toxic, caffeine-free, 100% natural, 100% organic, and comes with a 100% money back guarantee waiting for the side effects disclaimers with mds forte there are none order a 25-day treatment of mds forte by calling 213-405-5355 213-405-5355 or visit bestbloodsupport.com that's bestbloodsupport.com for mds forte a diabetes breakthrough <coughs> are you still a traditional smoker now experience a new lifestyle and try vaping with e-cigarettes by LeSig. 
Imagine no ashes, stains, nasty smell, or coughing and hacking. With LeSig e-cigarettes revolutionary microelectronic technology, rechargeable battery, and unique replaceable cartridge, you'll get all the benefits and satisfaction of smoking without the hazards. Choose your taste from a wide variety of our new American-made vapory and e-liquids at LeSig.com. And LeSig smokes the competition by serving thousands of worldwide customers with real people customer service, fast, free, same-day shipping, and a 30 day warranty and satisfaction guarantee so are you ready for a new vaping lifestyle then call 870-518-4307 that's 870-518-4307 or visit lesig.com spelled l-e-c-i-g.com lesig e-cigarettes for today's modern smoker Hi, my name is Richard Dolan. You're listening to the Paracast. With Gene and Chris in the Paracast, the Ouija boards take front and center. The book is called Ouija Gone Wild, written with Rick Fisher. Shocking true stories, you say. You're about to tell us a story, and maybe you can continue that now. It concerns the entity known most widely as Zozo, Z-O-Z-O, and a negative entity who um, comes through the Ouija board and starts out as Mr. Nice Guy, sometimes masquerading as a dead person that the, the board users know, and then getting increasingly nasty and seeming to have the ability to reach out beyond the board and affect people's health, mental state, luck, relationships, um, so is Zozo a name of it or just a label that's applied? This is the name that the entity gives, Zozo. And So if you get um, someone saying, I'm Zozo, run the other way. Absolutely. And uh, we good, have good cases. It's actually the name of a demon, a very minor demon, that is listed in uh, the 19th century infernal dictionary that Colin de Plancy put together. That's one of the most famous dictionaries of of demons, a minor demon from a possession case. Um, now, Zozo seems to have alter egos as well, like Zaza, Z1, a lot of other Z names. But I had a case involving a friend of mine just a few months ago who was using a Ouija board with another person, and an entity came through who started out, you know, being uh, rather friendly, asking, uh, you know, are you Zozo? I'm looking for Zozo, and then finally admitting that I am Zozo, well, you know, and uh, getting very kind of darker in tone. And she, she asked me, she said, have you ever heard of an entity? She'd never heard of Zozo before. She said, have you ever heard of an entity named Zozo? And I said, oh, Zozo is quite famous in uh, board communications. And when she, uh, I sent her around to a few sources, and uh, she was absolutely astonished that Without knowing a thing about this entity, uh, it had come through on her board communications. So Zozo exists independently of one's expectations. It seems to be. And uh, from an occult perspective, the scenario would be that there is an entity out there who uh, wishes to wreak havoc with people who goes by the name of Zozo and looks for opportunities to do so primarily through talking board communications. And, is this some sort of trickster type thing? Uh, it's definitely trickster because it starts out as Mr. Nice Guy and sometimes masquerades as a dead person and then at some point reveals itself, well, I'm, I'm not your, your grandfather. I'm, you know, my name is Zozo. And, so at that uh, point, if you are doing this, you're working on the Ouija board or whatever, doing any kind of communication, and you get the name Zozo, what do you do? Stop, say, be gone? What do you do? My general advice is to end the, this session and tell the entity to go away and not come back. And if it comes back again, if you um, do another board session, to stay away from the talking board uh, for a period of time. Uh, now, I've had this entity come through as Zaza, and uh, that's been, oh, about half a dozen times now uh, in the past couple of years where uh, I don't get Zozo, but it goes by the name Zaza. And, and maybe it was uh, Zaza Gabor. <laughs> yeah, misspelled, <laughs> phonetically spelled. Uh, I can, I but it's a, hip, a bunch of hip hoppers in in a in a, a Ouija board session. They get they get the entity yo yo. 
<laughs> well, you know, I you was going to add the sound of a things. crashing bomb or something like that or a drum roll or a cymbal, <laughs> but I won't. They say I tell bad jokes. Well, you, you just have to have a sense of humor sometimes about these things uh, to, yeah. to keep them in the right perspective. Okay, but yeah. Zaza, it's the same thing. Stop the sessions. Walk away from the board. Don't do it for a few months. Give it a rest. And with some people, it may have to be, this is not the device for you because it's going to be problematic, you know, whenever you use it. Is there a reason then to think that maybe certain people attract that kind of entity or being? There are people who, as I mentioned, you know, earlier in the show, there are people who have um, a higher degree of natural mediumistic ability. And a lot of people don't even know it because they've never tried it before. Maybe sitting down at a Ouija board is the first time they attempt to communicate with spirit. And so they, they think it's the board and not them when actually it's their own attunement. Well, if you're not uh, schooled and trained and know what you're doing in spirit communications and you open up like that, all kinds of things might answer, uh, including opportunistic entities who want to play around with you. You know, one thing that might be interesting here, because listeners are hearing this and many have never experimented with a Ouija board before, maybe they want to go and buy one. Okay, so maybe... This segment may be part of the next, and we also have questions, a few questions from our listeners. Tell our listeners, getting a Ouija board for the first time, maybe give them a Ouija board 101, what they should do, what they should look out for, how best to produce some kind of impact or effect. My recommendation is to start with a new board, Um, and that's because sometimes with old boards, um, they're... They can. There is the potential for a spirit attachment. Uh, this, it's not necessarily the case. Um, I have old boards in my collection, but start with a new one. Start fresh, and uh, be in good energy. Be uh, focused on what you're doing. It's not entertainment. Don't sit down and have a lark and want to provoke something and see what kind of a scare you get. Treat it like a serious communication device. Uh, with a specific goal in mind and direct the session. Uh, You can visualize yourself uh, in a protective space if you have um, meditations or prayers or invocations of protective spirits to do before a session. That's very helpful uh, for your own peace of mind, if, if nothing else and direct the session. Uh, Here's my purpose for communicating. I want to connect with so-and-so, and and these are my questions. And if communications start getting kind of freaky, you don't like the answers, or there seems to be an ugly personality who muscles in, just end the session. End the session. Tell uh, all the participants the door is closed, uh, the spirits stay in the spirit world, and the door to the physical world is shut. Uh, and then I, it's very important also to shut down your own self, uh, to detach from the session and not think about it a lot, not play it over and over again in your head. This is where a lot of people start to build up anxiety, and that keeps the link open to something that wants to play around. So if I follow those recommendations, I'll have a friendly experience with a Ouija board. Well, you certainly increase your odds, uh, Gene, of having uh, a neutral or or (laughs) benevolent experience. You'd bring the ghost to Steve Jobs, man. (laughs) Steve Jobs? I don't know. I don't think so. I do not think so. I've never had anything with a Ouija board that struck me as being strange. Now, my first wife and I played with it. That's Geneva Hagen. That's her name now. And we had situations where it moved around in a way that she felt was unusual. And she had a couple of friends where things might have happened. Again, we looked at it with skepticism. Didn't quite believe it. Now, why even then, and this gets into the paranormal realm and the UFO world and everything, why assume it's the spiritual world and maybe not somebody in an alternate dimension talking with us. That's actually a potential explanation uh, for some of this. And I I do believe that uh, some of our spirit communications where we think we're talking to the dead or to to spirits, we're talking to 
uh, personalities who, like us, are living in their own dimensional space. And uh, they may be communicating with us thinking we're spirits as well. So but, they're using uh, their Ouija boards and their reality, thinking it's fun and games, and they get in touch with someone, and they is us. It, it's certainly plausible under the multi-dimensional uh, model for reality that uh, we have dimensions that are layered on top of ours. And I've often thought uh, in my experiments with the, the Frank's Box technology that uh, I've often wondered, you know, am I talking to other beings or people or versions of, of humans in other dimensions rather uh, to disembodied entities in, in the afterlife or the spirit realm? And this is something that that we have no way of, of really proving at this point. We have no way of proving the identities of, of the beings that we communicate with, even when they give us information that can be validated through records or through somebody's uh, knowledge. Uh, because in, in occultism, uh, it's, it's held by many people that the communicating spirits, some of them at least, have a great uh, ability to masquerade and that they can assume personas the way a human being would put on a glove. They can slip on a personality and know enough about it to convince you that they are somebody else. This is not somebody else. This is Rosemary Ellen Guiley with Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. The GCN Radio Network, providing the world with hard-hitting talk radio. G-C-N. Great talk radio starts here. Hi, Ted Anderson announcing a great way to listen to radio on the telephone. By calling 760-569-7700, you'll be hearing GCNlive.com programs in seconds. Come to GCNlive.com, find your favorite host's dedicated phone number, and hear them 24-7. You heard me right. Every show has a dedicated phone number. Stop by GCNlive.com and bookmark their number today. And again, that's 760-569-7700. We the people grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit and carding to a private bank, having it led back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Ted Anderson, I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. The summer specials are on at HHA, Herbal Healer Academy. Current customers know this is the time to save big at HerbalHealer.com. And new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Right now, Herbal Healer's summer specials include our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale, liquid CalMag vitamin D and organic iodine, CoQ10 with Hawthorne, Colon Enhancer, Super 2, Natural Laxative, our exceptional product, Tonixin, Memory Power, and Super Male and Femplex, all on sale for summer at HerbalHealer.com. Also get 10% off on the Herbal Healer Academy Survival Course, information that might save your life. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on to our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988. Herbal Healer Academy at HerbalHealer.com. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. Notice that Chris is calming down now because I guess the weather situation, extreme severe weather, is now less severe? Um, Yeah, that's part of it. It's actually getting brighter out, and the Arroyo is not in danger of overflowing its banks (laughs) now. I think we're we're over the hump and uh, past the excitement here. It was touch and go for a while. It was. I mean, Uh I I had to cover the uh, mouthpiece on the phone because the hail was so loud. We have Rosemary Ellen Guiley, who, with Rick Fisher, wrote the book Ouija Gone Wild, Shocking True Stories. Rosemary, tell us who Rick Fisher is. How did he become connected with you in this book? Rick is a longtime friend of mine. He's the founder of the Pennsylvania Paranormal Society. 
and a very good paranormal investigator and EVP researcher. I've known Rick for many years. So we have to bring him on the show. That's what you're telling us. He's a very knowledgeable guy. I I get together with paranormal friends and do retreats and holidays every now and then. We like to rent haunted homes in great locations for research. And one year, we uh, a bunch of us took a house in Gettysburg over the uh, battlefield anniversary, and we were doing some investigations. And uh, Rick and I started talking about the Ouija board, and he had been collecting a lot of stories, uh, mostly from the early days of the Ouija board. And uh, that's where the idea for this book was born. Uh, I've done many investigations with Rick in Pennsylvania through the years, and he has a collection of about 40 to 50 Ouija boards himself and has run some more formal experiments, which we talk about in the book as well, trying to document uh, if there are certain conditions or things that can be predicted about board use. Well, very, very little can be predicted, I think, about uh, this type of spirit communication. So much depends on the individual's Uh, using the board. Uh, Human consciousness is the real wild card involved. A very quick question here. All the stories that you report in the book, how did you validate them? Did they come from newspaper clippings, other books, what? The uh, early accounts, uh, we took many from newspaper clippings. We have multiple copies of uh, many of the stories and single copies of some of them, news news reports uh, that were uh, written up, and some of them were also There was also additional information available in uh, various websites, and I did not rely on other books about the Ouija board. Um, There aren't very many of them written, and the ones that are in print tend to be very negative about the Ouija board. I did not want to be influenced by them. Uh, I did find the book Aleister Crowley and the Ouija Board uh, interesting uh, from the occult perspective, um, the principles of of how the Ouija Board uh, could possibly work. And then um, I interviewed a lot of people uh, and talked to them about their stories, and that's how this book came together. So there are a lot of stories in the book that are told for the first time. And uh, then we have some that are famous, like, um, you know, the uh, the soldiers who went AWOL and some of the murder cases, uh, and many lesser-known stories from earlier years as well. Uh, Bob Birch, who is arguably uh, one of the leading experts on uh, William Fold, the, uh, the history of the Ouija board and the Ouija board itself, was of tremendous help to us. Um, Bob made his collection available to us, uh, and I've spent quite a bit of time with Bob on uh, the, talking about the Ouija board in film, um, in uh, music and books, the history of the Ouija board, the the way the board evolved. So we had some good sources and input for this. Now, we didn't have much time before we announced this, but we did get a few questions from our listeners. So normally, as we've told our listeners, we have a place in our forums at forum.theparacast.com called the Question Bank. And the Question Bank is a place where you listeners can ask your questions. And we're working on other methods of doing this, possibly an accompanying audio file. So we'll play the audio file and then let the listener hear themselves, which is cool, and the guests will hear the questioner and maybe get a sense of where they are. So, Rosemary, are you ready? Just a few questions. I'm ready. Okay. We have one from a paranormal adept, that's the title we give these people, called Nameless, who's been a member since February of 2011, really active member. Two questions, he says, just a cheeky two questions. I just wanted to know if Rosemary had ever experienced a Ouija board reading that went far beyond just the collective consciousness style, imaginings of the board users. Personally, I have not. Um, In the chapter called The Artistic Ouija, uh, we talk about some of the uh, cases where people channeled something that got to be quite profound and it started with the Ouija board, like the Seth material. Uh, Jane Roberts Roberts, began getting her uh, Seth material. um, First it was through kind of a blinding inspiration. 
uh, where her she started shifting her consciousness. And then in the beginning, uh, working with the Ouija board, and then she, from there she went to uh, pretty much into into um, direct you know mediumship. Um, Patience Worth, uh, Pearl Curran, who channeled all of that work, um, did it painstakingly uh, through the Ouija board literary works that came letter by letter with the Ouija board, wow. but that was early 20th a lot century. Of work. <laughs> and uh, th- then there were the messages from Michael, the entity, um, uh, kind of a group entity who called itself Michael. Uh, transmitted across a Ouija board, but um, e- even the Seth material, uh, as I, I think the Seth material is some of the highest quality channel material produced, and yet even so, it doesn't have any concept in it that can't be grasped by human beings. But I think the question also needs to be asked: is if it was something beyond what we could comprehend. Uh, either from the collective or even individually, how could we even get the information? Because we, uh, I don't think we could get our, our minds around it. All right. Part two, from Nameless, tarot seems to have its roots sprung from the Kabbalistic tree. Does Ouija have a similar occult pedigree, or was it just purely a simple standalone interface or peripheral device? Well, the most... Um, uh, direct ancestor of the Ouija board was the um, the pointer called the planchette, which was uh, used in uh, spiritualist communications, and that was a uh, a little platform with uh, three legs on it, a tripod kind of thing, and one of the legs was a pencil, and uh, the medium placed their hands on the planchette, and then the messages wrote out in the pencil. So that's probably the closest to the direct pedigree of the Ouija board. But there have been other devices throughout history where, um, like, rotating wheels have been used. I mean, it was even said in in ancient times Pythagoras had some device like that uh, where something was manipulated by the spirits to spell things out. And uh, that goes way, way back in time. Uh, the tarot cards, uh, well, there is the Kabbalistic influence on those, but that seems to be much later in the tarot's history. You know, some of the early, uh, I think the earliest tarot decks come from about the 1300s, and their roots seem to be more organized toward mnemonic learning than Kabbalistic uh, occult uh, learning, which was uh, added, really added and amplified much later in the tarot history. Just very briefly, a stupid question. Do tarot cards have any relationship to traditional playing cards? Uh, yes, they do. And, in fact, uh, that's part of the history of the, of the tarot. Is Where playing that, cards come from? Um, well, uh, in, nobody really knows exactly how the tarot got started, but the, the earliest images, which would be from the major arcana, uh, as I mentioned, seem to be more oriented towards uh, the learn, mnemonic learning tools. Okay, we and have tarot cards, playing cards, not poker, and Ouija boards. Lots more coming with Rosemary Eiley. With Gene and Chris, you're in the Paracast. <laughs> We also have swag. You know, we have all these exclusive Paracast things that you can buy. We've got like, I guess, 60 or so different items. And entails T-shirts, sleeves for notebook computers, iPad cases, mouse pads, the Paracast jumbo tote bag, all sorts of T-shirts and jackets and stuff like that for men and women. We have a Paracast aluminum water bottle. All this stuff, you go to store.theparacast.com, store.theparacast.com. What makes it special is that the items are the best quality, you know, great T-shirts, fabrics, and they have our official logo on them. That's what makes them special in multiple sizes and colors. We even have stuff for children, stuff for women, stuff for men. We have all sorts of sizes, like small up to X large. A lot of good stuff. That's the swag from the Paracast. 
If you go to store.theparacast.com, stop by and take a shopping tour. Iodine protection packs from HempUSA.org are now in stock for immediate delivery worldwide. Our iodine protection packs include micro plant powder, green life kelp, red palm oil, and our clear roll-on iodine that will feed the body the iodine it needs. All iodine protection packs are in stock. Save you money and ship for free in all 50 states. Visit HempUSA.org or call 908-691-2608 today. HempUSA.org has a revolutionary wonder food for detoxing the body and rebuilding the immune system. Micro plant powder can help unclog arteries and soften heart valves while removing heavy metals, virus, fungus, bacteria, and parasites. Plus, it cleans and purifies the blood, lungs, stomach, and colon. Keep your body clean with micro plant powder. Visit us at HempUSA.org or call 908-691-2608 today. Let's keep preparedness simple. Do you need stuff for disasters? Of course you do. For over 15 years, DisasterStuff.com has, well, stuff for disasters. See? Easy to remember. DisasterStuff.com. Want free shipping on a new Berkey water filter? DisasterStuff.com is the official Berkey in-stock shipping center. Lots of folks want an EMP Faraday bag to protect sensitive electronics during a solar or nuclear event. Now for a limited time, all survival gear purchases over $75 include a free 8x8 inch EMP Faraday bag. Just enter promo code EMP bag when you check out at disasterstuff.com. We're also a country living grain mill authorized dealer. Plus we offer freeze dried foods by Alpine Air and Wise Foods. We also carry emergency kits, survival seeds and much more. Preparedness should be simple and it is. Just remember disasterstuff.com. Freedom through self-reliance and personal responsibility. Did you know that 50% of heart attacks are brought on by infections? Did you know that hospitals are breeding grounds for antibiotic-resistant bugs like MRSA? The environment is infected with parasites, and the mild winter means ticks with Lyme disease, mosquitoes with West Nile virus, and cold and flu viruses will be on the rise. Protect yourself with nature's natural antiparasitic, antiviral, antifungal, antibiotic, Allicin, the heart of garlic. Get concentrated protection with Ali C and Ali Ban from AffinityHealthProducts.com. One capsule of Ali C equals 40 cloves of garlic or 100 garlic pills. With no garlic breath, Ali Ban has Allicin in spray, liquid, and cream forms with three times more strength than leading brands and cost less. Go to AffinityHealthProducts.com, spelled A-F-F-I-N-I-T-Y, HealthProducts.com, or call 877-888-7126. That's 877-888-7126. Protect yourself with Ali C or Ali Ban from AffinityHealthProducts.com. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. Great visit with Rosemary Ellen Guiley. She's author of a brand new book, which is called Ouija Gone Wild. And I have it in front of me now. We're going to be asking more things about the book. And we were going to the history of the tarot card, the playing card. Any more to discuss about that before we get on to another question? Well, the tarot deck does incorporate um, what we consider to be the playing cards. It has a minor arcana composed of four suits and uh, an extra court card than we have in in our playing cards. But they are now part of the tarot. Uh, It seems to be the tarot is a combination of, I think, cards that were used for various purposes. Let's move to another question here. This is one that's a segue. Steve C., who has been a member of the Paracast Community Forum since November 19th of 2011, can you have a brief discussion with her about the paranormal activity at the home you and her visited last year? That must be Chris, for Chris. You mentioned it briefly a while back, but I want to hear more. So let's segue. What about the home that you and Rosemary visited? (laughs) Which one? We visited two, actually, but I think he may be referring to... Oh, the one where uh, the flower pot went on the floor? Well, that yeah, that's where we were staying, but we actually visited the home where some very interesting activity was occurring, and then in yes. between returning back to the house where we, we were staying, I took Rosemary to a location-specific spot that's uh, actually quite small. It's about maybe a 100-yard circle 
that um, seemed to be the epicenter of uh, several years worth of very, very strange uh, multifarious activity. And and uh, it was just it was done on the spur of a moment at about 11 o'clock at night. Uh, normally, when I go into that area, I I, I kind of sit on the periphery of it and kind of clear my mind and just kind of slide or glide into the the spot as opposed to just bursting into it like we did that night. And uh, I don't know, Rosemary, why why don't you give your particular uh, kind of impressions of what happened once we got to the the area and kind of give them your your particular hit on on what happened. And uh, we have described, I think, in a past episode what happened once we returned to the house where we were staying with the uh, potted plant jumping off the uh, windowsill, but what what sort of feeling did you get? You're quite an experienced, uh, one of the most experienced paranormal investigators that I've ever worked with, if not the most experienced, and uh, and I really value your very grounded approach out in the field. What what did you pick up from there? What was your impression of that spot? Well, that was um, when we were in Crestone, and, uh, you know, really, Chris, that was one of the most amazing weeks. Uh, we just went to so many sites that were so loaded with energy, but uh, I could definitely feel the energy in that place. And this was like late at night. It was, what, around 11 or 12 o'clock by the time we got right. there. And the, the whole area was just saturated with this um, this intense energy. And that was apparent to me as soon as we started walking out into in, into the, the ground. So we stood there for a few moments, just sort of, you know, like tuning our antennas or, and, and I think we both started to experience things simultaneously. I started seeing yeah. moving shapes uh, coming at us and it seemed like things like either came out of the night or the ground. I had another experience in the area where I could see things coming up out of the ground and these shapes, kind of misty shapes moving very rapidly toward us as though things were coming to to either repel us or check us out but we had well, a we greeting committee <laughs> we yeah. had a greeting committee and then i oh, could boy, see we lots both, I was... <laughs> <laughs> we both looked at each other i think we better go <laughs> it was um and and a lot of intense energy coming our way and then i could also see lots of small lights too uh yeah. kind of pink ponging around the area, uh, moving very fast. And uh, I, we both felt it simultaneously. And, you know, it's like, well, whatever's going on here, we shouldn't be here right now. Maybe we should have well, you and yeah. Chris here do a reality show. I mean, we had James Fox of Chasing UFOs. And although James is really a dedicated researcher, just about everybody says that show is very bad. That's miserable. Well, he's so getting, He's getting spanked. Oh, he's getting spanked hard. He's trying. He says he's trying. But he's gotten spanked yeah. hard over that show. Yeah. But what about a show with you and Rosemary going ghost hunting or hunting any kind of unusual events? Would anybody invest in that, a producer, a real producer who wants to do quality television? Is there such a thing? Unfortunately, I don't think so. Because if you look at a lot of these shows, they never really come up with anything. They either have to make it up in order to have something dramatic for TV or they don't come up with something. You have people like um, getting scared in the dark. Oh, what was that? And then it turns out to be nothing, but, you know, they're all scared. And uh, I I don't think... (laughs) Chris is definitely feeling the role. He's he's rehearsing right now. This is his audition. (laughs) All right, go. I'll tell you, we could pour it on. You know, we could pour it on. Okay, folks, if you yeah, want, if you're a producer, about, you know, work for Biography Channel, A&E, National Geographic, Sci-Fi Channel, we have yeah. Rosemary Ellen Guiley and Chris O'Brien. They're auditioning, folks. Let's get to another question, okay? <laughs> Here it is. And this is semi-related. It comes from JT. Been a member since 2009. He must be very tired. He says, dowsing rarely gets mentioned these days, but I'm curious as to what she thinks of it as an easy entry point, a tuning fork, if you will, to trying things out for yourself. It is one of the few instances where even professionals like archaeologists and geologists are inclined to accept its possible value. Rosemary. I love dowsing, and I use both the pendulum and the rods. 
Uh, I've been using rods increasingly in the last couple of years uh, when I've been working on long-term um, negative cases. Uh, these are areas where the activity is very intense, very chronic and prolonged, uh, resistant to resolution. And uh, I've been using them to, to get an energy picture of the land because I believe that geophysical factors are an important element in what makes an area uh, so intensely active. Um, totally agree. These portal areas that, that never close. But dowsing is very easy to learn. And, uh, you know, again, the skeptics will say, oh, you're moving these things yourself. Um, it's, yeah, tell that to every well drilling company in the Rocky Mountains and in, in the Southwest. You, exactly. You can't, How do you think they find wells? Did they have professional dowsers come out? My mother doused my brother's well three feet closer than the professional dowser did. So I don't want to hear about it from people saying that it's all a bunch of hooey. And, and they're spending billions of dollars to do this. No, well, they're uh, walking around with a willow branch or a pair of copper rods. <laughs> Uh, and there is such a thing as map dowsing as well. Uh, now, Yuri Geller sure. has been uh, known to uh, map douse uh, oil and natural gas for for the major companies. So I, I highly recommend it. It's very easy to learn. Uh, unlike a lot of electronic gear that um, malfunctions during investigations or the batteries run out, douse, dowsing is – it's. In that respect, a primitive tool, because it's just you and the tool, it's never going to run out of batteries. It's always going to work. You don't douse to get in touch with us. Just check us out on Twitter, the PowerCast at Twitter. This works. We have Rosemary Ellen Guiley with Gene and Chris. You're in the PowerCast. America's number one source for independent talk radio for over a decade. We are the GCN Radio Network. Graphic Converter is the image manipulation tool for the rest of us. It does not use any database. You get full control of all your files. Want to view the images of a folder? Drag it into Graphic Converter, and a powerful browser opens up to show your image files. You could use it for slideshows. You could use it to import images from digital cameras or from scanners. Need to do some image editing? You can do that, too, in Graphic Converter. Also, print catalogs. Convert from so many files formats i can't even list them download now to see if graphic converter is good for you like one and a half million other users guess what you could save money when you buy graphic converter use the coupon code night owl use the coupon code night owl to get a special price for graphic converter go to lemkesoft.com that's l-e-m-k-e soft.com lemkesoft.com l-e-m-k-e soft.com if you owe money to the IRS, you can't make the problem go away by yourself. But with the help of Dan Pilla, you can get your problem solved once and for all. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. For 30 years, I've helped thousands of people solve their tax debt problem, and I can help you solve yours, too. We take a very simple but proven three-step approach to solving your problem. First, we stabilize IRS collection actions so you don't have to worry about the IRS seizing your bank account or paycheck. Next, we build a comprehensive plan to get your tax debt reduced to the fullest extent possible, sometimes even completely eliminated. And finally, we work with you every step of the way to get your problem solved once and for all. Call us for a free consultation. Call 1-800-346-6829. We'll work together to get your problem solved guaranteed. Dan Pilla has been protecting taxpayers from the IRS for three decades, and he can help you too. Call us today at 800 800- Three four six six eight two nine. That's eight hundred three four no tax. BePrepared.com heats up July with the hottest sale on the web. Going on now. Save 28% on freeze-dried raspberries or save on our three-day light emergency kit, a $50 value. This month, just $30.99. Plus, all one-year supplies are on sale at BePrepared.com. This month, save over $350 on our traditional 2,000-year supply of food. Now, just $12.99.99. And get a hand grain mill free. Or choose our most popular year supply, the Premium 2000. It gives you 2,000 calories per day from a variety of nutritious meals for one whole year. Save over $7. 
$700, plus get a free Catadyne Hiker water filter, a $75 value. More details and more hot July savings at BePrepared.com now through July 31st. Call 800-999-1863 to experience exceptional customer service and BePrepared.com's low price guarantee. That's 800-999-1863. The choice is clear. Be unprepared or BePrepared.com. Many people have heard our ads on the benefits of truly undamaged whey protein, but they still do not believe there can be such an immense difference between damaged whey and undamaged whey. So I'd like to direct your attention to the comparative photos of two cows. Please go to OneWorldWay.com. That's OneWorldWhey.com. And download the free report on the miraculous health benefits of unheated whey. In this report is a website address that shows the comparative photos of two cows. The cow-fed cooked milk looks sick compared to the cow-fed raw milk which looks healthy after 21 years as a nutritional consultant most protein powders do not impress me as to either taste or health benefits now i know that not all protein powders are created equal and one world way surpasses my fondest expectations in both taste and health benefits call 888-988-3325 that's 888-988-3325 or visit oneworldway.com that's oneworld w-h-e-y.com This is Kurt Seven, the author of UFO Mysteries, and you're listening to the Paracast. Quickly about dowsing rods, Rosemary Ellen Guiley, on the Paracast with Gene and Chris. What kind of mechanism we're talking about here? So it's the individual in the dowsing rod. What is it they're sensing? Electromagnetic radiation, some condition of the soil that's sensed? I think that they uh, they detect some sort of earth energy, and I think they are sensitive to the configurations of the, the soil, the magnetic content. Uh, you are part of the instrument as well, and most dowsing rods are copper rods. In the old days, they just used twigs. You know, you see the woodcuts uh, of the uh, the dowsers walking around with the forked branches, and the they would yeah, be willow, looking for willow, water, most, and hazel used, was used uh, as willow, well. Right? And, uh, you know, the, the pointer would dip down wherever the water was supposed to be. You are part, and here again, mediumistic ability has a lot to do with how active these, these tools are in your hands. Uh, and you tune yourself in to the landscape, to the spirit world, to whatever it is you're looking for. Now, uh, T.C. Lethbridge, who was um, an Englishman who wrote quite a bit about dowsing, he said everything has its own frequency. And when you really learn the art of dowsing, you tune yourself into the vibratory frequency of whatever it is you're looking for, uh, even if it's using a, a pendulum to communicate with the dead. And that's where you find your success and your results. So you, you do set an intention with dowsing in terms of, of what, you're, what you are attempting to learn through your tool. And uh, it is responsive, amazingly so. Now, can anyone do this? Does it require a lot of training? Is it something you were born with? The people who have the most success and the fastest results, again, have this kind of natural mediumistic ability that is more prominent for them than for other people. But any, we all have it to some degree, and we can all train ourselves. And uh, it is easy to use and learn. You can teach yourself. The American Society of, of uh, Dowsers has a lot of uh, information and uh, training uh, programs. Every year I spoke at their conference this year in, in Vermont, and they offer some wonderful beginning, intermediate, and advanced training to not only sense different kinds of energy, but also resolve energy problems that you can uh, you can come up with solutions for people who are having like water issues on their property or uh, certain kinds of, of uh, spirit clearings. Uh, I think some of these, the gin cases, are, are very resistant to just about any sort of resolution. But there are many things that you can solve through dowsing. Before, you mentioned briefly portal areas, and we think of that in terms of places where you have more paranormal events, more UFO sightings, strange creatures, etc. Are we talking about the same thing? Yes. Uh, these are doorways, window areas, portal areas, that's the term I like to use, where they're, the veils between the dimensions are thinner, and the geophysical signatures of um, this side 
seem to have a lot to do with it, that um, there are certain contents to the soil, the magnetic anomalies, both positive and negative, uh, that is where the magnetic field is distorted either uh, in either direction in a marked way. Uh, that this, and I'm speaking here not in science terms, but just from, from my observations through my own experience, that it seems to warp space somehow, interdimensional space, to make, uh, make it easier for things from other dimensions to access our dimension. These are areas of ongoing activity uh, where we find many, for example, Bigfoot reports over years and years, uh, mysterious lights in the sky, hauntings, mysterious creatures, intense spirit activity that you can never get rid of is resistant to exorcisms and things like that. Is this something we could measure, or do we measure it by the nature of the experiences that are happening? I think both. There's, I, I think that there's a way to document these things in hard data as well as the anecdotal or soft data. There are certain patterns of experiences and phenomena that happen in these portal areas, and that's, that's what I like to look at. I like to look at the soft data. I think that there are there are ways that science can describe these things, and that's why I think examining the uh, the content of the soil, the magnetic fields, and the contours of the land, we can get a hard data picture, a better picture of these these portal areas as well. I've been spending a lot of time in southern Pennsylvania in the state of West Virginia. Whereabouts uh, where in southern Pennsylvania? Uh, the southwestern corner that this would be uh, Greene County, Fayette County. There have been a lot of UFO at, uh, reports uh, for yeah, decades. Bucks and, as well. and big Bigfoot, Bucks is, yeah, the, the corner that I'm concentrating on would be Greene and Fayette and uh, on down into West Virginia. And I've described West Virginia, the entire state, as one big portal. It's got so much stuff going on it. Now, I lived for a number of years in southeast Pennsylvania, about 40 miles west of Philadelphia in the mm -hmm. western suburbs. And we had some UFO cases there. I got one more question that came in at the last minute from a very, very long time poster back from 2006, the first year of the PowerCast. And his name is Pixel Smith. And he says, I am quite good at dousing for electrical lines, sewer pipes, water lines, septic tanks, etc., just by using two pieces of wire. I risked my life many times by relying on my dowsing abilities before digging around power lines, high-pressure gas mains, etc. I wonder, too, if dowsing can be utilized in paranormal research effectively. I have been advocating that paranormal investigators learn how to douse. I think it is an important tool that gets way overlooked with all of this overemphasis on high-tech gadgetry, which has its place. But it's not the whole picture. It has its place. But there are other tools that yield different kinds of information. And, yes, you know, he's right. You can take a coat hanger and do all kinds of incredible dousing. It's not so much the tool itself. It's the tool becomes part of a process that you are, you, the human being, is involved in as well that's attuning to these things that are extra-dimensional you can make a pendulum out of, you know, plumbing materials and a piece of string and have it work. It doesn't have to be a, on a silver chain and, you know, fancy, a fancy bob. Yeah, it's the process. My mom had a, uh, a silver chain with a, a small round, uh, slightly larger than, you know, like the size of a large marble that was an old watch and uh, looked like an eyeball. And she would wear it around her neck. That was her watch. And she'd whip that thing off, and she'd douse at the drop of a hat if she wanted to, uh, to get an answer to a question. She didn't do this in public, and, and she didn't do it very often. But uh, as a kid, I remember being fascinated by that and asking her, you know, what are you doing? How does it work? Do you think it's, it's, it's real? I mean, I asked, you know, I think, pretty intelligent questions. And um, she told me, yeah, your grandfather has been dousing uh, for years, taught me how to do it when I was little, and here, let me show you how to do it. And I learned eight, nine years old how to uh, how to use pendulum uh, for dowsing. And then, and uh, and she, as I mentioned a couple times on the Paracast, uh, she was the one that doused my brother's well. And as I said, she came three, I think, or four feet closer than the professional dowser who came out with the well drilling company. So uh, she was very had some real real talent. And uh, and I agree, Rosemary. I think it is an overlooked tool. I think someone 
with a little bit of training and um, obviously some natural abilities and mediumistic abilities uh, is going to be helpful. But anybody can douse. It's a matter of, of putting the time in, getting a little bit of education, and, and, and working with it and, and experimenting. Have somebody bury something in a yard without you knowing where it is and then work on, on identifying the location. And it's uncanny how accurate it can be. And uh, it's one of the areas I think skeptics uh, tend to kind of just gloss over and they say, oh, I can't be real. And, and they don't really look at the fact that dowsing has been shown to be an effective tool for hundreds and hundreds of years. And uh, there's no getting around that fact. So I'm off my and soapbox. Pe- people who, who use dowsing will use it in almost everything in life. They will douse books. They will douse food. Um, objects you know should should they have something you know maybe we can get them to douse for money i've talked to you about that we have rosemary (laughs) ellen guiley we have to make some money now for our benefactors with gene and chris you're in (laughs) the paragraph are you tired of searching for great talk radio something more important search no more we are the gcn radio network If you want to get your website online and you need reliable service, first-class service at the lowest possible price, there's only one place to go. Well, DreamHost has a special promotion with our show where they'll offer you unlimited disk space, unlimited bandwidth, one-click web apps such as WordPress, 24-7 support. You can save over $55. You want to know how? Go to DreamHost.com slash radio, DreamHost.com slash radio. Whether it's personal mail, whether it's business email, you want reliable, dependable delivery, freedom from spam, freedom from viruses. Well, Polaris Mail offers professional email hosting services for your personal or small business use. Each account uses 25 gigabytes of storage, an easy-to-use webmail interface, and full mobile sync. Sign up today for a 30-day free trial at PolarisMail.com, PolarisMail.com. The summer specials are on at HHA, Herbal Healer Academy. Current customers know this is the time to save big at HerbalHealer.com. And you customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Right now, Herbal Healer's summer specials include our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale, liquid CalMag vitamin D and organic iodine, CoQ10 with Hawthorne, Colon Enhancer, Super 2, Natural Laxative, our exceptional product Conixin, Memory Power, and Super Male and Femplex, all on sale for summer at HerbalHealer.com. Also get 10% off on the Herbal Healer Academy Survival Course, information that might save your life. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on to our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988. Herbal Healer Academy at HerbalHealer.com. Prices are for base buildings only and may not be available in some areas. This is an alert. If your business or church is building next year, you're about to pay more than you should. This could mean thousands of dollars more for your office, retail space, church, or warehouse. So call General Steel now for the quality and the price in a pre-engineered steel building that you just can't beat. That's right. General Steel can save you thousands of dollars with a pre-engineered steel building designed for your business or church. What does it mean? How about a 50 by 100 foot building for under $30,000? Don't pay thousands more than you should without calling General Steel. Steel first. Call 898 Steel today and save as much as half the cost and time of conventional construction. Don't let rising steel prices put your project in jeopardy. Call now to lock in your price for three months. Call 866 99 Steel. That's 866 997 8335. Don't spend thousands of dollars more than you should. Call 866 99 Steel today. What if your local grocery store was suddenly closed? What if? What if a crisis of world events caused anarchy? The time time to prepare yourself and your family for what if is now. now. 
Now, for a limited time, the Freeze Dry Guy offers all GCN listeners 25% off all Mountain House number 10 case lots. And that includes free shipping. Go to freezedryguy.com and see the variety of our quality Mountain House foods and a wide selection for every taste. Mountain House foods have well in excess of a 25 year shelf life and are easy to prepare. Just add water for great tasting snacks or meals. The catch? This 25% off number 10 case lots of Mountain House foods only last through July 31st. Go to freezedryguy.com or call 866-404-3663 and mention GCN to get 25% off per case lot of Mountain House foods with free shipping to the lower 48. That's 866-404-3663 or go to freezedryguy.com. Hurry, sell ends July 31st. Hello, this is John Burroughs, one of the witnesses to the Rendlesham UFO incident. You're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. This has been so much fun. Rosemary Ellen Guiley, the it's author of... It's always fun when Rose on. Oh, she, always fun. This is something yeah. where I'm just having a great time because I'm not an expert on Ouija boards. All I know is what I read in the papers or this book, Ouija Gone Wild, Shocking True Stories. And we only have one segment left, so I want to ask a couple of quick questions here. Obviously, everybody talks about vampires now again, now and again. Of course, we have the TV series True Blood, which is just wild and wacky and pushes envelopes in different ways. But I notice that you have a chapter called a choir of vampires. Pray tell, what's that? One of the weirdest Ouija board cases yeah. I've ever oh, come boy. across. And uh, this was, um, it was told to me uh, by, she was in her 30s at, at that point, about uh, some high school experiences that took place in the early 70s uh, with her and uh, started out with two other girls, one of whom, again, this validates the mediumistic thing she was the trigger she was the psychic trigger because she had the natural ability and uh, these two girls got involved with a Ouija board they were both dark shadows fans and I think that there was that there was a genuine entity contact it used dark shadows a TV serial the TV serial we're not talking about that movie that failed with Johnny Depp, we're talking about the original one from the original the 1960s. TV series with Barnabas uh, Collins, played by Jonathan Frid. It was the the gothic soap opera that you know school school kids ran home every day, you know, just to catch it on school. And it started in the 60s, and um, I it ended in I believe 1972. It had a very long run and was hugely popular. Well, these girls were fans, and so the entities who who responded on the Ouija board, the first one, his name, he said his name was Devin, and he said he was a vampire. And his story sounded very much like Barnabas Collins, and that uh, you know he was separated from his long-lost love, and it just happened to be this one girl who was mediumistic. So I think there was some subconscious stuff going on there, but also I, I do think there was a real nasty entity who um, played out the story that they wanted to hear. So they were all excited about it. They get the third girl involved. And um, this entity then introduces other entities who communicate on the Ouija board, and they call themselves the Vampire Choir. So it's Devin and the Vampire Choir, and they spin these stories about being um, vampires in the 1700s. And, uh, and then the messages start to get progressively nastier where um, they're delivering bad news and the girls are going to die and they're spying on them all the time. They even follow them into dressing rooms to watch them undress in department stores. Uh, poltergeist effects start happening in uh, the homes of these girls. The one girl, the mediumistic girl, says that Devin, she's letting Devin drink her blood and and she's got these marks on her neck. It just went from fun yeah, and games pretty weird. Uh, into this nightmare where, um, and they bring in other kids. They try magic spells to try and get the vampires to go away. They stop using the board. The vampires are, are still uh, plaguing their nightmares and poltergeist stuff uh, at home. And the, the only way that this one girl managed to extricate herself was... Um, to, to leave the group, and the group split up. 
Uh, and she, for years, she was traumatized by this and felt she had a spirit attachment. She then got two deliverances, two Pentecostal-style deliverances, which she said were more harrowing than the experiences that she had with the Ouija board, and didn't do anything. <laughs> oh, man. Got to hear what uh, happened. And she was having visits, shadow people visits, you know, which were coming into um, to her room. She said it was years. She had to com- make a complete break with uh, anything occult or paranormal. And it was uh, slept with the lights on. And at the time she gave me the interview, uh, she said, you know, she still was sleeping with the lights on. And she had five dogs, you know. She was trying to, you know, protect herself against something that she couldn't see. But the freakiest thing was... The girl who had the mediumistic ability, who was supposedly being vampirized, she goes on and gets married. And one day, she and the husband come to, to visit this the girl who went through the, the deliverances. And so the husband uh, takes the, the, the friend aside and says, um, how well did you know uh, Devin? And apparently, this girl had told her that Devin was an old boyfriend. And... Um, uh, the friend looked at him and said, Devin's not human. <laughs> and the guy just kind of freaked out because he had been told that Devin had been a real person. But um, there, it was a very complicated picture because clearly this, this other person who had the mediumistic ability was very much wrapped up in a fantasy as well. And my feeling was that uh, an entity had taken advantage of that and just played it for what it could uh, get out of it. What can I say? Oh, pretty amazing stuff. I mean, when you look at some of these case histories, it's you know it's hard to separate out where a person's preconceptions and belief and um, expectation leaves off and where something truly other um, is introduced into it. And it's even harder to differentiate between the two once you start a chain of events like you've just described. It's very difficult to separate out what is truly other if 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 you can even do that and what is all projection by by the experiencer. And, and out of anybody I've ever worked with or have been aware of uh, in the field, you're one of the few people I would trust in that process to try to, <laughs> you know, separate out what's uh, you know, maybe some sort of psychological uh, element versus something truly uh, in need of being addressed in terms of something that is, is separate from the experiencer. And uh, I must say, I'm, I'm, it, it was very, as you know, I am one of your biggest fans. I urge everybody to read your 56, is this your 57th book now? <laughs> How many books have you written? It's something like that. It's uh, somewhere yeah, in the uh, mid to upper 50s. I've kind of lost track. Nine encyclopedias, uh, I think. Uh, uh, I do recommend your work highly. You are Thank one you. of the most important figures in the field, and uh, it is a pleasure to have worked with you and, and hopefully continue working with you and, of course, having you on the Paracast. You're one of my favorite guests, and I think uh, everybody is is really well served by by bringing themselves up to speed with your very good writing and you, you have a very accessible style and boy I'll tell you you can research your your tail off you you are really amazing. Chris and I we we've, we've got to do some more in the valley there. There's uh, a lot of yep. ground to be covered. Yep, yep, we're just licking the tip of the proverbial iceberg. And the thing to say about this book, this book is not, you know, a 2000 page book. It's like 220 pages. It's a yep. fairly short book. You get through it in a few hours has a lot of interesting information, and there's yeah, also a section in the appendix story. about Ouija boards in the movies where it's been featured yeah. as a character, an appliance, whatever. Yeah. And All the Ouija the board, is, it's, it's always been portrayed as um, a device for accessing the spooky. And over the course of time, uh, and primarily from the exorcist on, it's been associated with um, demonic things. And uh, as you know, Bob Merch pointed out to me, he said, Witch Board, which came out in 1986, took every Ouija superstition and, and then some and made up some of its own and mashed them all together and created this kind of negative demonic 
persona for the board that um uh, you know, if you if you go out and you ask a lot of people today about the Ouija board, a fair number of them will say, oh, no, wouldn't touch it. It's evil. But if you ask them how they know it's evil or why it's evil, they, they're usually not even able to tell you. They just know it is because they've heard it from so-and-so or heard it from so-and-so sort of thing. It's like saying a hammer or, or a saw is evil. It, it's just not the case. The book is called Ouija Gone Wild, Shocking True Stories from Rosemary Ellen Guiley and Rick Fisher. I assume available everywhere? Soon to be available everywhere. It's currently available on my website, visionaryliving.com, and will be up on Amazon and on Kindle very soon. Chris O'Brien, of course, has our strangeplanet.com. He started updating again with a brand new design. He's going to integrate the webcam coming soon and lots of other stuff. You could reach us on Twitter, the Paracast. We are the Paracast on Twitter. We have a fan club on Facebook. And that's how it goes. Rosemary Ellen Guiley, thanks for joining us this week on the Paracast. Thank you, Gene and Chris. A pleasure. The Paracast, featuring Gene Steinberg and Christopher O'Brien, is a copyrighted presentation of Making the Impossible Incorporated. Tune in next week for a new adventure in... The Paracast.